Bennett men. Medina Valley coming into this game with a record of 6-1. and one. They are 4-0 and oh in district play overall. And Memorial coming in 0-4 oh in district play. And uh, Medina Valley with a win tonight will secure a playoff spot. And so uh, looking for that win, especially with the two big games coming up against Alamo Heights and Kerrville Tyvee uh, next week and the weekend after that. It's actually sunny here. We've got sunshine out for the first time in about a week and a half. It's nice to see sun. The field's in great shape with the turf field here and ready for a nice night of football, Mari. Jared, this is the first time we're going to sit broadcasting one of the Panthers football games this year and see a sunset. Yeah. So believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we've had uh, seven previous broadcasts where we have not seen a sunset. And tonight we're seeing a beautiful one here in San Antonio on the south side. And as you look across the home crowd on our side and then our visiting crowd on the other side, and you look in the horizon, you see the 1968 specialty, the Hemisphere Tower, and it makes you feel real good that you can finally see a sunset. Yeah, absolutely, and that you actually have some visibility beyond without all the mist and fog and stuff that we've had in the days prior to this. Um, I am Jared Lucky. I'm here with Mari Stein, and Garrison Garza is running our board for us here this evening. Jeff couldn't be with us, so uh, thanks Darn. to Garrison for helping us out here, and uh, thanks to Rosie and Merle back at the uh, KMAC Life Studios tonight being with us. Uh, as I mentioned, Medina Valley, 6-1 uh, and one coming into this football game, and uh, their only loss was the first game of the season to Waco La Vega, who was one of the top four teams in the state of Texas in their in their uh, class. And, you know, we just saw the speed. Medina Valley hung with them for a half, and we just saw that speed and athleticism of La Vega come through in the second half, and that's what pulled them away. But since then, Medina Valley has bounced back in district play. They got a big win at Lockhart through a lightning delay, uh, took on Bernie Champion, a game that – Champion reeled off 21 unanswered points in the second half. Medina Valley answered back and won that game 35-34 to at Panther Stadium. And then the last two weeks, Medina Valley with a 42-7 to win against Kennedy. And then a uh, 40, I believe it was 48-21 to was the final against Uvalde last week. And Uvalde scoring most of those points against Medina Valley's second and third team defense. I think it actually, <coughs> actually turned out to be 48-28. Because they had right? one time and moved it within 14 points, and then Medina Valley got that late score. Yeah, but to make 49 it. 49 to it 28 is what I think it ended up. No, he, Grove missed the last extra point. 48 28, yep. Yep, and I think it was 21 because they scored the 14. It was 35 to 21. Well, it was, 30, it was 35 30, to 7 at half. Yeah, and then they made it 35 21, and then Medina Valley brought on Child, who threw that long pass to Leggett at the end of the ball game. And Re regardless, the score didn't indicate yeah. the way the ball game was no. because Medina Valley started their second and third strings in the second half, and Uvalde kept their first team on. And, and the reason we know that is because they were all dirty as they finished at yeah. Medina Valley because the field turned into be pretty much of a, a mud hole after it was finished Yeah, and, and with all the torrential downpour that, that we've had in Medina Valley is – one of the well, actually, there's two team, two teams in this district that still have natural grass, and that's Uvalde and Medina Valley. Yep, yeah, that's right. And you know, ma that field was rough. I know they let the JV and freshmen play on it last night, so there's no telling what kind of shape that's well, in. All you do is have to ask Garrison because he's the kicker for yep. the JV, and there was no footing at all. Yeah, it's it's got to be pretty bad, and hopefully we get some sunshine and they can they can help that field a little bit because Medina Valley takes on Alamo Heights next week at Panther Stadium. And if Medina Valley can win this game here, you know, Alamo Heights plays Kerrville Tyvee tomorrow night. That game, if Medina Valley keeps winning, that's those are going to have district championship implications on both of those games. The last game of the season against Tyvee could be for the district championship. Well, but in these next three weeks, the heavyweights kind of rotate and play each other. Uh, Bernie Champion, Medina Valley, Kerrville Tyvee, and Alamo Heights. Round Robin all play. The thing that Medina Valley has in its favor is they've already beaten Bernie Champion. And they've already taken care of Lockhart. So yep. two out of out of, the, out of the five Medina Valley's done play, they still have, as you mentioned, Alamo Heights next week, which will be home at Medina Valley, and then they travel to Tyvee to finish out the season. First things first, you need to take care of Memorial yep. tonight. You need to get through this game. You need to get through it unscathed. 
Yep. You're going to have an extra day of rest because we are playing on a Thursday night because they share the field here with the Kennedy Rockets. So Medina Valley just need to get through this game unscathed and take care of business right from the start. And I don't see any way, I don't see any problem with Medina Valley having tonight with the Memorial Minutemen. No, I, I see them. I can I can see Medina Valley tonight trying some new things. We saw them against Kennedy run from the spread offense a lot, which is something that they didn't really do all year. I can see them trying to do that, show some different things, especially for the Alamo Heights scouts that are, you know are going to be here watching this game. So uh, we'll see what the Panthers throw at them tonight. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and then we will come back. You're listening to Panther Football, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we will continue here in just a moment. Here at Medina Valley Broadcast Network, we love all sports. We currently broadcast football, volleyball, basketball, softball, and baseball. We not only serve Medina Valley, we also can broadcast other schools in the area in multiple sports. If your business is interested in having us broadcast a single game or a season, and you want to be part of the action, contact Jeff Stivers at 830-931-4504 or email him at jeff at mvbn.net. At North Park Chevrolet in Castroville, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks, and fountain drinks. Always convenient, well lit, with clean restrooms. Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984 and a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. Security State Bank has one simple goal, to be the best bank possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. We believe in superior customer service, active community involvement, fair and honest business ethics, and loyalty. We've been in Castroville for a year now, and we've enjoyed growing with you. Come by 1726 Highway 90 East or call us at 830-538-9898. A real person will answer because that's how we do business with common courtesy and uncommon service. Bank online at securitystbk.com. Security State Bank, South Texas. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Welcome back here to Edgewood Veterans Stadium. Medina Valley getting set to take on Memorial. And uh, I know that earlier in the year there were some injuries Medina Valley had, um, all except I think Yancey Miller's the only one that's not going to be in the normal starting lineup here tonight. Um, and he's been injured for a couple of weeks now. And, and Medina Valley's filled those spots very well. And we've talked in the coaches' shows about next man up. And all the guys who have stepped in when somebody's gone down have really stepped up and played their roles. And that just gives some credit to the coaching staff for always having these guys prepared. And I, I look forward to Medina Valley coming out here being focused and trying to, to take control of this football game early. Well, and you, you, <coughs> you want to see what Medina Valley does at the toss. Medina Valley will get the call, the, the coin toss. And if, if they win... I venture to say Medina Valley puts their, as they did before here, two weeks ago here at Kennedy, put their offense on the field and march down and get an early lead and let their defense set the tone after that. Yeah. Because this, this is a very stout defense that, that Medina Valley has. They've proven that time and time again. They uh, they had some problems against Bernie Champion in that second half, but but they made the adjustments. They got some big stops when they needed to in that game to give their offense the ball back, and they managed to come through and, and win the game. And uh, I've said all year that I don't think anyone's really going to stop Medina Valley's offense. It's going to be if, if Medina Valley can stop them, especially when you get into some of those teams like Champion Heights and Kerrville Tybee that have good offenses. I think that's what's going to play out as – the last three games of the season roll on. Turnover battle is going to be very big in those games where, you know, 
nine times out of ten, it may come down to the last possession of the ball game to see who's going to win. And the Panthers, both times they faced the Bernie teams, had a lead at halftime. And in the second half, Bernie champion and the Greyhounds came back on Medina Valley. Medina Valley held on and won both of those ball games. But if you look what those teams have done since then, the Greyhounds have been on a roll since then, and nobody has, has figured out how to stop their quarterback. The Chargers uh, coming into Medina Valley lost the previous game and then lost to Medina Valley, falling 0-2, but they've come back with two big wins of their own to get back to 2-2 two and two and sit right now in fourth place a game ahead of Lockhart, plus they have the tiebreaker over Lockhart because they beat Lockhart last week. So the Chargers have put themselves back in contention. It's going to be very hard for them to climb up into the top spot anymore because there's not enough games left and because of who they lost to. But they can still play a big part of who finishes first, second, and third in this district. Well, yeah, you're right because they, they lost to Kerrville Tyvee by three. They lost to Medina Valley by a point. So they lost two games by a combined four points, went down 0-2. They still have to play Alamo Heights still in, in this play, in this district run. So there's always that still, too. And, and you know that Champion's a good team, and they're vying for that last playoff spot with Lockhart, who, you know, we've, we've seen Lockhart, other than the Medina Valley game, really get blown out by some of these teams. And that was a surprising score last week with Champion that they beat them by the, the score that they did. I was pretty shocked at that. But uh, you still have champion having to play Alamo Heights. So there's a lot of things here. These next three weeks are going to be real exciting in this district to play out for who's, who's going to be in those spots. And I was looking at the early playoff bracket. And Medina Valley will play District 13 is who they'll be playing. That's the, that's the district with Brenham and uh, Bastrop in it. And there's a couple of new teams in that district. So that's who Medina Valley would be playing regardless of where they finish in the district. They'll be playing somebody from District 13 in the first round. Well, and then you go, you, you just mentioned it's probably the top two teams in that district, Brandon and Bastrop. And if Medina Valley can avoid not playing one of those yep. in the first round, it actually gets a little bit easier in the second round than it does in the first round. So yep. the Panthers, uh, not since I want to say it's been eight years, 2008 or 2010, I want to say that Medina Valley got past the first round of the playoffs. So they're looking to set a new presidents here this year and, and get past that point. I do want to congratulate uh, Coach Griggs and the volleyball team. They played Southside uh, Tuesday with playoff implications in, in, in tow. Medina Valley needed a win to, to wrap up second place, and they lost the first set to – Southside, but then won the next three pretty convincingly. The last game wasn't even wasn't even close. The Southside, the Cardinals didn't even get double, you know, reach double digits in points. Medina Valley will play next Tuesday at Horland at seven o'clock, I believe is the start time, against Alamo Heights, which is a team they're familiar with because they were in the same district. We were in the same district with Alamo Heights before the realignment came this past year, so. Medina Valley is going to face in the first round an opponent that, that they should be familiar with, and that's new territory for Medina Valley, Jared. Reach the playoffs, and, and if the volleyball team advances to the second round, that's something that the volleyball team hasn't done in a while. And just watching those girls, they're peaking right now at the right moment. But to get back to football, Medina Valley needs to take care of business at hand here on Thursday night. Beautiful sunset here in San Antonio. The Panthers need to take care of the Minutemen stay healthy, and then look forward to the final two games with first place the first place in district at hand. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Maury. Um, let's go ahead and take a quick break, and then we will come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we will continue here in just a moment. .net for great articles on all your favorite coaches, players, and more at mvbn.net, the official website of the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. From the time our alarm clock rings in the morning to when we turn the lights off at night, electricity plays an important role in our lives. But most of the time, we don't even think about it. And you don't have to, because the employees at Medina Electric Cooperative are behind the scenes making sure you get reliable, affordable electricity delivered to your house or business. Your cooperative is here for you, and we have been since 1938. Connect with Medina Electric on Facebook, Twitter, or at medinaec.org. 
Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. Qualifications, rules, and limitations supply. Rates, rewards, and restrictions may vary by account. Contact institution for details. Tickets, popcorn, and sodas. That'll be $35. Cash or debit? Debit! I mean, I'd like to use my debit card, please. Uh, Can I do okay. it? All right! Swiping now! What if paying with your debit card was always this exciting? Casasa Cash Back is a free checking account that pays you for everyday debit card purchases every month you qualify. Plus, with ATM withdrawal fee refunds nationwide, that's a lot of extra cash to spend on whatever you like. Ask for free Casasa checking at Community National Bank. Member FDIC. Double T Outfitters offers deer, dove, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in southwest Texas on over 20,000 low-fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597 or online at DoubleTHunting.com. Welcome back here to Edgewood Veterans Stadium. Medina Valley getting set to take on Memorial. Medina Valley coming out of the locker room right now, getting ready to come out on the field. And I'm going to let Mari give you the Panthers starting lineups. Starting lineups for the fitting team year of Medina Valley Panthers at center. Junior number 60, Spencer Payne at strong guard will be Nathan Trammell, and he'll share time with number 64, Josh McAllister, both seniors. At quick guard, senior number 52, Josh Valenzuela. At strong tackle, senior number 53, Edward Roya. At quick tackle, senior number 74, Jonah Barrow. At strong end, senior number 80, Aaron Sotelo. Wide receiver, number 7, Garrett Leggett. Swingman, senior number 25, Jacob Salas. Fullback is junior number 45, James Gibson. Halfback is senior number 22, Logan Masters. And a quarterback, senior number 10, Alec Child. On the defensive side of the ball for the Panthers, at the tackles is senior number 88, Steele Perry, junior number 58, Trace Ferguson. At the ends will be senior number 44, Isaac Santos, and senior number 21, Dylan Fillinger. At linebackers for the Panthers will be junior number 34, Taylor Weir, and juniors number 28, Grant Snyder, and junior number one, Dawson Grove. Corners will be junior number five, Tanner Bippert, Senior number 42, Dante Henry. At strong safety, junior number 9, Charlie Morris. And at free safety, senior number 12, Cole Modley. Doing the place kicking for the Panthers will be number 1, Dawson Grove. And doing the punching tonight will be number 10, Alec Child. Those are the starting lineups for your Medina Valley Panthers. And uh, Medina Valley coming out here tonight. They'll be wearing all white, white pants, white jerseys with orange numbers, orange lettered Panthers on the front, the black helmets with the orange MV and the black Panther going through it. And uh, Memorial wearing, well, they haven't come out of the locker room yet. I know they're going to be wearing blue jerseys, but I haven't seen their pants yet here. They may be wearing evening. all blue because I see a Minutemen coming out, and Medina Valley's wearing all white, so that would probably make sense with yeah. Memorial wearing all blue. No, they're going to be wearing blue tops with white pants, with the it white looks like, okay. and white numbers on the jerseys, blue helmets. They are the Minutemen. That is their uh, mascot. And this field shared by Memorial and Kennedy. We were here two weeks ago, and Medina Valley beat Kennedy 42-7. to And that, uh, that was the third game of district for both teams. Um, this is a beautiful stadium here, Edgewood Veterans Stadium, a track around the field, turf field, big scoreboard on the right side here. Um, as we we are on the home side in the, in the nice press box that they have here, we're facing the Medina Valley crowd, and both teams have come out of the locker room. They haven't run out onto the field just yet, but they will here shortly. When they do that, we'll take a break for the national anthem. Um, 
And here comes Memorial out on the field to try to get this thing started here. And Memorial looking for their first district win of the, of the season here. And when you get to a point like this where you, you almost don't have a chance to make the playoffs, they're basically playing here to try to ruin somebody's season. And, you know, the, you can't ever underestimate a team like this because, you know, you have to play the game for a reason. And, you know, Medina Valley makes some mistakes and lets them hang around in a ball game. You never know what can happen as the Panthers come out on the field here. That's why Mari and I were talking earlier. A team like this, you need to get ahead of them, and you need to establish yourself early in this game and, and not let them hang around. No, if you get them down, you need to keep them down and don't let them get back up. Don't let them hang around because it's, as we mentioned last week, you know, Uvalde was one of those teams where if you let them in the game, they can be dangerous. Medina Valley found that out in the second half when they pulled their starters out and Uvalde kept theirs in. They cut the lead to 14 points at one time and Medina Valley ended up scoring right away after they got to 14 and then that was the difference in the ball game. But, you know, Memorial's coming in and as you mentioned, Jared, this is probably their playoff yep. matchup right now because they have nothing to lose right now. They're on the outside looking in and I do not think there's any way that they can make the playoffs in this district with the games they got remaining. So, this is their make-or-break ball game here to beat Medina Valley. Yeah, you're right, because they've already lost to Tyvee Heights and um, I think Lockhart and Champion. They still have to play Kennedy and Uvalde or the next two games, so they've already played all the powerhouses in this district. We are getting close here to the National Anthem, and then we will be taking a break here in just a second as they introduce the color guard onto the field here at the moment. As we mentioned, Jared, a beautiful evening for yep. football. The first time the Panthers have played this year where we have witnessed the sunset, and it is beautiful. Yeah, it is, and, and flags are hanging limp here at the stadium. No, no wind down on the field. We'll take a break for the National Anthem and come back. You're listening to Panther football, and we'll continue in just a moment. Medina Valley Broadcast Network on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at MV Broadnet and visit the official website at mvbn.net. Get the latest and join the conversation about all things Medina Valley sports. Come on, let's talk. When you put money in our bank, you started a chain reaction. We made an auto loan. A local car dealer sold a car. A car salesman got a commission. His wife bought groceries. The checker at the supermarket got a paycheck. You made that happen. Thanks. Come home to Castroville State Bank. Member FDIC. Visit us online at castrovillestatebank.com. Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why State Farm agent Hazel Russell and her team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Hazel Russell at 830-931-3441 today or stop by her office at 1103 Highway 90 West in Castroville. Medina Valley Pediatrics is the only pediatric clinic in Medina Valley for kids from birth to 21. From sick to well care, ADHD treatment, sports physicals and immunizations, same day appointments and 24 hours a day by phone for after hours emergencies. Most major commercial insurances and Medicaid accepted. Medina Valley Pediatrics, 1028 Country Lane in Castroville. Call 830-355-2732, mv-pediatrics.com. back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. National Anthem's over, and we're just awaiting the coin toss here as Medina Valley and Memorial getting ready to get going here. It's a 7 o'clock start because it is a Thursday night game um, with a school night. They start 30 minutes earlier than they would if it was Friday night. Um, tomorrow night, um, Kerrville Tyvee taking on Alamo Heights. This is the only game in the district uh, tonight for these two teams, uh, we are at Edgewood ISD, which is why there's a big maroon E in the center of the field that says Edgewood in it. 
Um, they also play soccer here on this field, it looks like. I can see the soccer outline for the field here. And uh, both teams getting ready to send their captains out. For Medina Valley, number 10, Alec Child. Number 12, Cole Modling. Number 18 on the field for the Panthers, Frankie Luna. And number 54, that is Nathaniel Tre uh, Tremel. And for Memorial, their, co their captain, number 10, Jose Perez. Number 70, Fermin Cruz. Number 72, Benico Gallardo. And number one, Cesar Flores, who will be the quarterback for Memorial tonight. Those are the captains as they get ready for the coin toss. The Panthers will get to call it as they are the visiting the visiting side. It's the referee going over things with both sides here. Showing them heads and tails on the coin as they get ready for the, the flip. And Memorial, one of the teams that sends their whole team out to the halfway to the numbers on the field as honorary captains, I believe, is how they do that. And the coin toss is in the air. I think. Referee's talking to Medina Valley. And we will see here. I believe Memorial won the toss. And they will receive the football. And Medina Valley will defend the goal on the left side of us here. They'll be moving left to right when we start the ball game. As... Memorial will get the football, and Dawson Grove will come out to put his foot into it and get this ball game started. I'd like to remind everyone that the kickoffs are brought to you by Royce Grove Oil Company and Exxon Stations in Casterville and all over the surrounding areas. You can visit any of those for fuel, convenience stores, whatever you need. As the Panthers come out on the field, and he will place it at the 40, and we're ready to get going here. This is... What we've been waiting for all week, Jared. Yep. Not a Friday night football, but Thursday night football here at Medina Valley. As Jaron mentioned, the big game coming up tomorrow night is Kerrville Tivy and Alamo Heights at Alamo Heights. And Jaron and I were talking about that, and we'd liable to be in attendance there watching that game as it should be an exciting one. So Medina Valley needs to take care of business tonight here. Set the tone early, take the lead, and, and see if they can keep Memorial on the short side here on this Thursday night for football. Yeah, and back deep to receive for the Minutemen, number 14, Alan Hernandez, and number six, that is Rene Jimenez. Both sophomores back deep to receive for the Minutemen. Their blue is more of like a royal blue color, blue shirts and blue helmets. As Dawson Grove ready to boot it away. As Grove has to make sure his team's ready, he will put his foot into it. A high end over end kick that's going to be fielded by Hernandez at the 12-yard line. Starts up field to the 20, 25. He's hit and brought down by a couple of Panther players, and that's where Memorial will start first and 10 from their own 26-yard line. Tanner Bippert and Brenton Romo on the stop there for Medina Valley. They'll actually spot him on the 27, so that's where they'll start as the Minutemen will come out on the field here. Their offense for the first time, they're going to spread things out here. Nobody in the backfield. Five wide receivers here, three out to the left, two to the right, and Medina Valley jumps off sides right away. Free play as they air one out deep. And it is caught, and did he go out of bounds? Nobody really signaled anything over there on the far sideline. Incomplete, I believe they're calling. Yeah, and they do call offside against Medina Valley, so a five-yard penalty right off the bat, and it'll be first down and, and five. Medina Valley going on that first, sa first sound, and Memorial got him to jump off sides. And so... Memorial right back out to the line of scrimmage. Five wide again. Nobody in the backfield. Now they look to the sideline as they adjust the play call. They're one of those teams that come to the line and the coaches adjust from the sideline here. Panther corners back off. There's a little wide receiver screen out to the left. It's complete. 
to number 20 for Memorial. That's Blaze Lara, and he gets up to the 35-yard line, a pickup of two yards. It's going to bring up second down and two. Grant Snyder out there for the Panthers on the stop. We forget that was first down and five, so it's second down and two to go after the three-yard pickup. This time out of the pistol, four wide, one man as the running back. That's Ronaldo Carrizales. Number eight, Joel Lozano, the quarterback, starting things off here for Memorial. Carrizales in the backfield. They're going to throw the ball out right side, complete, and dropped. They call it a fumble. We'll see. I think it's going to be an incomplete pass. As he was hit, as it got to him, it's going to bring up third and two on the incomplete. The number nine, Charlie Marsh on the coverage there, and it looked like the receiver tried to turn up field before he had the ball, and Marsh stripped him of it before he made an offensive move. So incomplete pass for the Minutemen. And here's third down and two. Big third down here for Memorial on third and short. Out of the shotgun, they have four wide receivers. Carrizales alone back. Lozano looks to the sideline as the coaches call out the play, and now they're ready. Takes the snap, hands the ball to Carrizales up the middle, and he is met right away and driven backwards. A gain of only a yard. It's going to bring up fourth down and one. Santos and Snyder met him in the hole. Just a minimum gain. They're going to give him maybe a yard. It's going to bring up fourth down and one from the 36. And number 10, Jose Perez comes on to punt the ball away for Memorial. Moduling and Bifford going back deep to receive for Medina Valley. Return men standing around their own 35-yard line. Punt is away, an end-over-end kick, a good one, and Modulin's going to let it bounce, and it touches a Memorial player and will be down. At the Panther 27-yard line, it'll be first and 10 for their first drive. Blaze Laura down there to down the ball for the Panthers. Couldn't have been a better start for Medina Valley, a three and out here. Especially after the penalty that gave them first down first, and five. Yep. So Medina Valley's defense stiffened up, only gave four yards there in the next three plays, forced a punt. So let's see what the Panthers can do here on offense. Jared, what do you see them, a good heavy dose of Gibson, or you try to beat them deep right off the bat? I think they're going to come out here and show some spread offense like they did against Kennedy, and that is what they're going to do here. They're going to go with four wide. Gibson is the lone back to the right of child, and they'll hand it to Gibson right away over the left side of the line. And he's going to get across the 30 up to about the 33-yard line. So a good pickup by Gibson on first down, gain of six yards. It'll bring up second down and, and five, give him five yards on the play. Number 10, Jose Perez on the stop there, along with number 53, Angel Banderas. So as Mari said, good dose of Gibson right there. One play, five yards, and ready to go again. This time... Under center is Child, takes the snap, hands it Gibson left side again, and he's got a first down a little more up across the 40, up to the 41-yard line, a gain of about seven yards, first down Panthers. Number 53 also and 54 respectively. Banderas and Trevino on the stop, but Gibson stretched the change for a first down. Ball sitting right in between the 40 and the 41. So two plays and a first down from Medina Valley. As the Panthers come back to the line of scrimmage here, They'll show with, with trips out to the right side as they move left or right. Child out of the shotgun. Gibson to his right. Takes a snap. Hands it. Gibson again on the carry. Right up the middle. Gets up to the 45-yard line. Pick up a four more yards. And it's going to bring up second and six. Number 32 on the stop there for the men and men. That's Timothy Gomez. Gomez is a senior inside linebacker for the men and men. Medina Valley huddled up here with a gain of five yards on the play. Second and five upcoming here. Trips out to the right again. Gibson still to the right of Child out of the shotgun. Takes the snap looking to throw. Child going to air it out. Left side going for leg it deep. He goes up and he can't make the catch. He was covered very well out there by number six, Rene Jimenez, and a, a good job in coverage that time. Very good job by Jimenez keeping inside containment there and forcing Garrett Leggett out towards the sidelines, a great coverage down the field by the Minutemen. And so it'll bring up third down and five. Third and five upcoming here for Medina Valley as they come up to the line of scrimmage. This time they'll come out in their patented slot formation here. Child under center, Gibson right behind him. 
takes the snap, hands the ball off to, I believe, Masters coming around the right side, and he's going to get a first down. Picked up six yards on the play. That was Logan Masters. Gets across midfield and down to the Minutemen 46-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Panthers. Junior Jonathan Martinez, one of the defensive backs for the Minutemen on the stop, but Masters did enough. Got seven yards on third and five. So first down and 10 here from the Minutemen 46-yard line. First time in Memorial side of the field here for the Panthers. Back to their tight formation here. Takes the snap, hands it off to Solace going around the right side. A lot of room to run across the 40. Spins up to the 35, and he's taken down there. A pickup of 11 yards, another first down another, for Medina Valley. Another first down. Good by, job by Solace taking, bouncing it outside after the first initial wave. Got an extra five yards and got the first down. Number 32, Timothy Gomez once again on the stop. But that was a good job of Solace following his blockers down the field. Yeah, absolutely was. They'll come out here with Trips right side again. Child out of the gun. Ball at the 35, takes the snap. Rolling right, looking to throw, fires it. Complete out to the 35, and he's taken down inside the 25-yard line, down to the 23. That was number 80 for the Panthers. Aaron Sotelo on the reception. Jonathan Martinez on the stop. Sotelo's a big body out there out in space. Jared, hard to bring down when he gets ahead of steam going. He is a big, imposing figure out there. Absolutely. Gets the ball down to the 23-yard line. It's first down in 10, Medina Valley. Trips out to the left here. Child out of the gun, takes a snap. Hands it to Gibson up the middle. Gets across the 20, down to about the 16-yard line. Good run by Gibson on first down. A pickup of seven. It's going to bring up second down and three. Defensive end Gabe Castillo on the stop but not before Gibson gets um, more than half of that 10 yards, fourth da uh, second down and about four inside the red zone already, Jared. Yeah, absolutely. It was a gain of six yards. Second and four upcoming here for the Panthers. Two wide on each side. Gibson the lone back. They'll send Masters in motion. They'll hand it to him on an end around, going left side, looking for some room, and he is hit and taken down in the backfield. A loss of about five yards. And it's going to bring up third down and long. Good job there on the end by number 22. Roger Garza came in from his safety spot. And Medina Valley is going to – actually, it's going to be Memorial calling a timeout here on this third and nine play. Well, and this is a big third down for, for Memorial. You Medina Valley has been moving the ball methodically. Now you got them for a loss, and they're in third down and long situation here. The one pass play Medina Valley threw, Jimenez defended it very well here. So this is a big, big play here for the Minutemen. Well, and, and fortunately for the Panthers, uh, the second pass he found Sotelo out in the flat, and Sotelo ran for a first down. But on that play, he tried to get it to your speed to the outside, and Memorial has scouted that play good and shut him down. Number 22, Garza, with the stop there. And it's going to bring up third down in – Nine, do you see the Panthers' four-down situation, or will you let Dawson Grove come out if Medina Valley don't convert here and try a field goal? Well, it depends on what they get here on third down, I think. Is too far right now for him right now? Uh, no. So it's about his range. No, what, what I'm what I'm talking about is if Medina Valley gets this in about a fourth and two or three then situation, then they'd it. probably go for it. But if it's fourth down and, and nine like this, then I'd probably let Grove kick the field goal. They'll come out here with two wide receivers out to the right side of the formation. Child will go under center. Gibson and Masters, the two backs. Takes the snap. Hands the ball. Gibson left side, and he gets across the 20. Only got about three yards there as he gets down to maybe the 19-yard line, but it's going to bring up fourth down and about six. Gomez on the stop there for the minute, man. So gets down to the 19. Needs to get down to about the... 13-yard line for a first down, and the Panthers are going to go for it. Out of the shotgun, they'll send four wide. Two to each side. Gibson, the lone back. He's to the left of Alec Child. Now he'll move to the right. 5.46 to go first quarter. They send a man in motion. Child rolling out, looking to throw. On the run, throws complete through a whole host of defenders down to the 10-yard line to Sotelo. Gets it down to the 9, first and goal, and a great pass and catch there by Child and Sotelo. Sotelo had to go down on his knees to catch that ball. Pass was thrown only where his receiver could catch it, and a good job by number 80, Aaron Sotelo, getting down and getting that ball 
And that was a big, big fourth down conversion. And so the Panthers here on first and goal come out here in the I formation, takes the snap, hands it off to Sotelo, bounces it to the outside, and he is across for the touchdown, a nine-yard touchdown run by uh, Salas on the carry. And it's 6 to nothing, Medina Valley, and Salas looked to be bottled up, bounced that play to the outside, and got his nine yards for the touchdown. Yeah, he was stopped inside the inside gap that he was supposed to go in between the center and the guard, bounced it outside and basically untouched till he got to the goal line and then muscled his way through. Nine yards and a touchdown for Salas. I like that. You, you had the eye formation there, and Gibson was your fullback. First man through the hole, and everyone's keying on him, and Salas goes the other way with the football. And here's Grove to tack on the extra point. Charlie Marsh, the holder for the Panthers. High snap, but Marsh gets it down. Grove's kick is up, and it is good with 5.03 to go in the first quarter. Your score, Medina Valley 7, Memorial nothing. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we will continue in just a moment. This is MVBN, the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Nobody can design, create, or maintain your lawn better than 3D Landscaping and Irrigation. With over 17 years of experience, owner Ray Doyan and his crew take pride in their craftsmanship and service. They're fully insured, offer free estimates, and multiple references, so you know you're getting the best. 3D does landscaping, lawn maintenance, irrigation, tree installation, lighting, and more. Whether it's residential or commercial, 3D Landscaping and Irrigation has you covered. Give 3D a call at 830-985-9115 or find us online at threedlandscaping.com. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium as Medina Valley leading 7 to nothing off of the Touchdown, nine-yard touchdown run from Jacob Salas, and then the point after attempt by Dawson Grove. Grove ready to boot this one away here. Kickoff brought to you by Royce Grove Oil Company and Exxon Stations. Hernandez and Jimenez back deep to receive, and Grove with a high, high kick. Medina Valley trying to run over it. Ball's on the ground, and the Panthers cannot get it. Number two, Tony Hernandez falls on top of it for Memorial. Good heads-up play for Hernandez because the Panthers were coming after that. Yeah, number 15 almost recovered that for the Panthers. That's Isaac Moreno. He slid, but fortunately for the Minutemen, they were able to jump on that ball. It'll be first and 10 Memorial from their own 30-yard line. This is their second drive of the ball game. First one ended on a three and out. Memorial comes to the line here. They'll go with four wide receivers way out to the right and kind of a diamond set. One man isolated out to the left as Lozano looks to the sideline for the play. Out of the shotgun, takes the snap, looking to throw quickly left side. Incomplete pass. Pass was intended for number 14, Allen Hernandez. Santos in the backfield. Got a hand up in front of the quarterback. Made him throw it a little bit earlier than he wanted to. Taylor Weir was out there in coverage along with number 42, Dante Henry. Second down and 10 upcoming after the incompletion. Lozano out of the pistol. Carrizales is back behind him. Panthers jump, but they get back in time. You know, this is the first time Medina Valley's really seen an offense that, that adjusts their play the way that Memorial does, and that, that defense trying to pin their ear ba ears back and come. They've been caught offside once, takes the handoff. Here they come on an end around. It's handed off, and Medina Valley right there to meet him at the 30. Falls forward for a gain of maybe a yard. That was number one, Cesar Flores on the carry, and it's going to bring up third and nine. Dante Henry and Taylor Weir on the stop there for Medina Valley. Good closing speed by the linebacker and the cornerback for Medina Valley. So third and nine here upcoming for Memorial. Lozano out of the pistol. Four wide receivers, two on each side as they move right to left. They look to the sideline for the play. There's 428 and counting to go here in the first quarter. Medina Valley with a 7 to nothing lead. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Lozano sets up, fires right side high. But he makes the catch at the sticks. Forward progress is going to give him a first down. That was number 14. Alan Hernandez made a good catch. The ball was thrown high, but he came down with it. Great catch with Imogen on the coverage. And that was a great job by Hernandez coming down and getting that ball as that ball was thrown high. 
But he did what he had to do, helped his quarterback out and got a first down. So first and ten here for Memorial. That's their first first down of the evening. They'll come out here in the pistol again. Lozano, Hernandez is the lone back. Four wide receivers. They'll go with two on each side of the formation. Clock ticks down to ten as they get the play in from the sideline. Lozano from the gun going to keep it himself going out to the right side looking for room turns the corner puts his shoulder down and he gets about three yards up to about the 43 yard line and it's going to bring up second down and about eight Dawson Grove on the stop there for Medina Valley number 14 Jared after that catch he come off hanging his shoulder a little bit he's getting checked on by the trainer he might have a shoulder stinger there yeah got hit pretty hard when he made that catch earlier in the ball game second down and eight after the two yard quarterback keeper They'll send trips out to the left here. Lozano out of the pistol. Memorial again looking to the sideline for their play after they come to the line of scrimmage. They go with the no huddle offense. Takes the snap, hands the ball. Hernandez, no, he fakes it, he throws it back, and that's a fumble. The ball was behind him, but it goes out of bounds. I think they're just going to say it was an incomplete pass. Wow, that looked like a lateral. It looked like he threw it behind him. And but, they're going to call it incomplete. It could have been a loss of about five yards. As it is, it's going to be third down and eight. Oh, that was close. Very close. I mean, we're Mari and I are sitting right here on about the 40, and he was throwing it pretty much even with us, and it looked like he threw it backwards. But nonetheless, third down and eight here. Lozano brings his team to the line out of the pistol again. They'll send trips out to the left side here. Hernandez, the lone back. He's to the left of Lozano. Takes a snap looking to throw. Drops back. Fires it out into the flat. Complete. Out to Flores, and he's hit and brought down at about the 45-yard line. Only a pickup of three, and it's going to bring up fourth down in about five or six yards. Number nine, Charlie Marsh, and number 28, Grant Snyder, made sure there was no run after the catch there. Going to bring up fourth down. Fourth and five. They get it up to the 46-yard line, and Perez coming on to punt this ball away. Bippert and Modulin going back for Medina Valley to receive. 217 and counting to go first quarter. Panthers with a 7 0 lead, and they'll be getting the ball back. Perez's punt is a good punt. It's in over end. It's going to take a bounce and take a memorial bounce and be downed at about the 22 yard line. So a good punt by Perez that time, and it'll be first and 10 Medina Valley. Yeah, whenever you don't get a good, whenever you don't get a return on there, you did your job as a punter, number 20 down there to down the ball. That's Blaze Lara. And no return after the punt. So Medina Valley will get the ball. Second possession of this first quarter. Well, and he, he punts the ball well. They're high punts. It gives his, his kick coverage team time to get down there, not giving Modling and Bippert a chance to field the football. Two punts, zero return yards. Yep. So the Panthers will come out here out of the shotgun. They'll go with split backs, Gibson and Masters. Two wide receivers out to the left. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Fires it out to the left side. Incomplete in and out of the hands of number two, McCauley, and it's going to be second down and, and ten. If he makes that catch, he's got some room to run. Yeah, he does. Panthers are a little shorthanded in the backfield as uh, Wesley Pardo is out tonight yeah. with a knee injury, so you might see a lot more of number 13, Caden Hernandez. You're seeing a lot of uh, number 25, Solace, so far already this evening. Panthers will come out here under center. One wide out to the left side here. Gibson in the backfield. Child takes the snap, hands the ball, Gibson right up the middle, across the 25, up to the 30, and he falls forward to right at the 30-yard line. A good pickup there, and it's going to bring up second down and two. Number 44, Nathan Palacio on the stop. Make that third down and two. Ball up to the 30-yard line, and so Medina Valley here on third down looking to pick up these two yards and keep the drive going. Minute and a half and counting to go first quarter. Panthers come out with no wide receivers here. Child under center. Gibson and Masters, the two backs. They'll send Solace in motion. They're going to hand the – and that was a broken play, and Child's going to go down in the backfield. It looked like Solace ran into him. He didn't – it looked like somebody went the wrong way. I don't know if Child turned the wrong way or what happened there. Never got the exchange. He loses about three yards. It's going to bring up fourth and five. Well, and we've seen that happen several times 
with, you know, going the wrong way on the play. And that's a big bugaboo that you'd think the Panthers would have had solved by now, but it's happened at least once or twice in every ball game so far. Child ready to punt it away. Hernandez standing back deep, and the punt is partially blocked. And it's going to roll down at about the Panther 47, 48-yard line. And so not a, not a good punt there by Child. As I, I believe one of the Memorial players got a hand on that punt, and it's going to give Memorial good field position here, first and 10 from the Panther 48. Yeah, they're starting on the plus side of the field for the first time. And, you know, Medina Valley in the passing game has looked a little shaky here to start with. They're, they're not catching some, some passes. Um, that pass to McCauley earlier that was in and out of his hands. Um, just need to settle down into this ball game. Memorial will come out here in the shotgun. They'll send four wide receivers, two on each side. Lozano out of the pistol. Number 21, Zachariah Ayu, Iowa in there. They're going to hand the ball to him. Going to try to get outside, and he's going to be met. And his second effort got him back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second and ten. We are in Santos on the stop there for Medina Valley, along with number 28, Grant Snyder. So second down and 10 upcoming here for Memorial as they come out here in the gun. Three wide out to the right. And that will end the first quarter of play. So your score after one quarter here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium, Medina Valley 7, Memorial 0. You're listening to Panther football, and we will continue here in just a moment. Tweet and retweet scores, schedules, and more. Tweet at MV Broadnet. For MVBN. Sammy's Restaurant and Havy's Alsatian Bakery. Two legendary landmarks in Castorville. From breakfast to delicious hometown lunch specials and more, Sammy's satisfies your taste buds with the unique flavor of Castorville. And from fresh baked breads to pies and pastries, South Texans have made Havy's Alsatian Bakery a must to visit since 1940. Sammy's Restaurant, online at sammysrestaurant.com. Havy's Alsatian Bakery, online at havysbakery.com. Welcome back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. As we go to the second quarter, we flip things around. Memorial moving left to right in the first play. They hand the ball straight up the middle, and he's got some room to run. Gets it across the 40 down to about the 39-yard line. He's going to be a yard short of the first down. It'll bring up third and one. Grof and Modulin on the stop for the Panthers. Good hard running by Memorial. Inside Medina Valley territory at the 39. <clears throat> So third down and a yard upcoming here for Memorial as they come back to the line of scrimmage. Ball at the Panther 39-yard line. Trips out to the right. Lozano looking to the sideline here for the play. He has it. Tony Hernandez, the lone back. They're going to hand the ball to him. No, they pull it out and throw it out to the left side. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Angel Castro and... That was just a case of trying to run before he caught the football all the way. And he had room. He would have got the first down easy. Just took his eye off of it. Four down territory here for the Minutemen. It'll be fourth down and one, and they are going to go for it here. As they'll come to the line here, Lozano out of the pistol. Two wide receivers on each side. They look to the sideline for the play now. Now they're ready to go. Fourth down in a yard, out of the gun. Lozano takes the snap, hands the ball right up the middle. He's hit and dropped, and he's not going to get it. Lost about a yard on the play, and Medina Valley will take over on downs. Grant Snyder shooting in from his linebacker spot. A run blitz there by Medina Valley, and Snyder all over that play. Hit him in the backfield. A loss on the play. Panthers get the ball. Turnover on downs. And so Medina Valley's offense will get it back now. They gave Memorial a short field to work with, but the Panthers stand up on fourth down. <coughs> as the Panthers come out here on first down, ball at their own 40-yard line as they start the drive, leading 7 to nothing. Child under center. Gibson is his lone back. 
No wide receivers. They'll send a man in motion. They're going to hand the ball to Masters. Coming around the left side, he's got some room to run. Up across the 45-50, down to the Memorial 45-yard line. Picks up 15 yards and a first down for Medina Valley. C.J. Cardenas, sophomore on the stop, but Masters gets to the corner. Stretches the chains once again for a big first down inside Memorial Territory. A 15-yard run by Masters on first down. That was a case of him coming in motion. They handed it to him on a basically an end around and managed to cut it upfield for some yards. They'll come out here, two wide out to the left. Gibson the deep back in the formation, offset eye. They'll send Solace in motion, takes the snap. Hands the ball to Solace, going right side. A lot of room to run, 40, 35, 30. And he tiptoes out of bounds down around the, looks like the 28-yard line. Good pickup that time of about 17 more yards, first and 10 Panthers. Jimmy Trevino on the stop there. Now it's just the same play, only the opposite direction to Solace. And about the same outcome. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And, and two runs at now, Medina Valley starting to establish that speed, trying to get around the outside here. Had two successful plays with it, first and 10 at the Memorial 28-yard line. And Medina Valley kind of sticking with their base offense now, that slot formation, slot T. They'll send a man in motion here, looking to throw off the play action. Child rolling out right side. He's going to tuck it and run himself. And he's going to get a few yards, gets it down to about the 25-yard line, maybe inside of it by a yard. It's going to bring up second down and about six. Number 33 on the stop there, Jonathan Martinez. That was a good job. He went through his reads, didn't find nobody. Body made something happen, got a good four, four and a half yards. Good manageable second down here. Yep, second and six upcoming after the four-yard quarterback scramble by Alec Child. As Medina Valley will... Come back to the line of scrimmage. Gibson, the lone back. Two wing backs. They'll send a man in motion, and they're going to get a timeout taken here by Medina Valley. Uh, timeout brought to you by Peerless Equipment Company, and with that, we will take a quick timeout also. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in just a moment. Podcast Network on Facebook. Like us, and you'll always get the latest on Panther sports and news from MVBN. Once you start banking online, it all just starts to click. You get e-statements, online bill pay, 24-7 access, your whole financial picture right on your screen. Plus, with our bank, you get the local support you need to make it all work. Get clicking with online banking today. Come home to Castroville State Bank. Member FDIC. Visit us online at CastrovilleStateBank.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Welcome back here to Edgewood Veterans Stadium. We're in the second quarter, 10.01 to go. Medina Valley with a 7-0 lead. They have the ball second down and six at the Memorial 24-yard line. As the Panthers come out of the timeout, both teams with uh, – actually, Medina Valley with two timeouts remaining. Memorial still with all three of theirs. Panthers come out here with uh, two wingbacks. And Gibson, the lone back, child under center. No wide receivers. They'll send a man in motion. Hands the ball, Gibson up the middle. A lot of room to run, and he's gone. Touchdown, Medina Valley. A 24-yard touchdown run by James Gibson, virtually untouched in Medina Valley with a 13-0 lead. And, and, Jared, you mentioned just getting back to the bread and butter. You know, got under the center, went in your basic formation there for the Panthers, and they marched it in for a touchdown. Yeah, and a good job by that offensive line opening up a big, big hole there for Gibson to run through. And as we all know, when that, when that young man gets ahead of steam, he's not going to be brought down too easy, and there was nobody there to contest him as Grove on to try to tack on the extra point. Yeah, he went right on the left side of the big center, Payne. Good snap. Grove's kick is up, and he drills it straight through. So with 9.53 to go in the first half, your score, Medina Valley 14, Memorial 0. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in just a moment. V B. 
Weather in South Texas is unpredictable. That's why our neighbors in Medina Valley trust Four Winds Air Conditioning and Heating for residential and commercial service. Four Winds provides maintenance, repairs, equipment upgrades, and heat load calculations for new construction design and installation. Four Winds offers financing on anything over $300. Family owned and operated since 2006. Four Winds Heating and Air Conditioning. Call 210-892-2925 or on the web at number 4windsacandheat.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium, 14-0 Medina Valley leading Memorial after the 24-yard touchdown run by James Gibson and Dawson Grove ready to boot it away. This kickoff brought to you by Royce Grove Oil Company and Exxon Stations. Back deep to receive is Alan Hernandez and Rene Jimenez. And Grof ready to boot this ball away. High end over end kick. Hernandez calls for a fair catch. Wow. At the 16 yard line. Nobody near him calling for the fair catch instead of trying to get some yards out of the return that time. I've never seen that really happen, but. First and 10 Memorial, and they'll start from their own. We'll see where they spot him at here. At the 25? So I guess if you call fair, fair catch, catch inside the 25, they put you up to the yeah. 25. So first and 10 here at the 25-yard line. Lozano out of the gun, no wide receivers. They have three out to the left, two to the right. Memorial moving left to right now in the four, uh, as you look at the field. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Sets up, fires out to the left side in the flat, incomplete. Pass intended for number two, Tony Hernandez. It'll bring up second and ten. Tanner Bippert on the coverage there outside for the Medina Valley Panthers. Devin Steuben in the area as well. So second and ten upcoming here. And, you know, Lozano hasn't thrown the ball bad tonight. His receivers really haven't helped him out very much. A few drops so far. Yep. Midway through the, well, not even midway through the second quarter. Lozano looks to the sideline here for the play call. They're going to empty the backfield again here. No, Nobody in the backfield. Takes a snap, fires it quick, complete. Just a slow little hitch route, and the ball comes loose at the end. Some of the Panther players saying they have it. We'll see what the call is here. And it is Panther football as they come up with the fumble. That was just a quick little... Hitch route there to the slot man, made the catch, tried to get upfield, and ball popped loose at the end. Medina Valley comes away with a turnover. And I'm not sure if that was Snyder or Weir that jarred the ball loose, but one of the active linebackers for the Panthers jarred the ball loose. As soon as he caught it and he made a, a, a football move, he went forward and he drove, knocked the ball loose, wanted to see if he could call him down by contact, but that wasn't a decision. Medina Valley gets the ball, short field to work with here. Ball at the Memorial 31-yard line as the Panthers come to the line of scrimmage here. 9.38 to play here in the first half. The Panthers with a 14-0 lead and looking for some more. Gibson and Masters, the two backs, no wide receivers. They'll send a man in motion, hands it off. Gibson, Child pulls it out, looking to throw, complete to Sotelo. Still on his feet inside the 10, trying to keep his balance. Pushes his way down to about the seven-yard line before he's brought down. Good catch that time by Sotelo. Kind of went up and got that ball and managed to get some extra yards after the catch. Jonathan Martinez on the coverage and a good play fake there by Alec Child yep. and Gibson there. Sold that inside handoff and Sotelo just snuck out there in the flat and got the ball and nearly scored there down to the, about the five. First and goal for the Panthers. Hands the ball off. Right side, number 24, that's uh, Morales for, I believe, yeah, Diego Morales for the Panthers, and he's going to pick up about three yards. It'll bring up second and goal from the four. Jose Perez on the stop for the minute, man. So second and goal, ball at the four-yard line. Panthers getting the play in from the sideline here. They'll come to the line of scrimmage. No wide receivers here. Takes the snap, hands it off. Morales again, and he's tripped up right away. Maybe got a yard on the play, and it's going to bring up third and goal. He tripped up in the 
backfield there by number 44, Nathan Palacio. Got back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. So third down and four, ball at the four-yard line. It's third and goal. Leggett wide out to the right, only wide receiver. Morales in the backfield. They're going to pitch it to Morales, going right side, getting cuts it up field, touchdown Medina Valley. Diego Morales gets in the end zone, a four-yard touchdown run, and Medina Valley with a 20 to nothing lead here, and here comes Grove to try to tack on the extra point. Just a little sweep there to the right side of the formation. Morales tried to go wide and then cut it right up field, untouched for the four-yard touchdown run. Widen some margin to 20 to nothing with the point after attempt coming from Dawson Grove. Still Perry is the center on this extra point play. Charlie Marsh is the holder. So Marsh waiting on the snap. It's high, but he gets it down. The kick is up, and it is good. So with 7.47 to go in the first half, your new score, Medina Valley 21, Memorial nothing. We'll take a break. You're listening to Panther football, and we'll continue in just a moment. The Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Sometimes it seems like banks try to make things too complex. At Broadway Bank, they're removing the complications and offering services some other institutions won't, like the all-new Broadway Bank free checking. Open it on your mobile phone in as little as 90 seconds. It's fast, easy, digital, and free. Discover the all-new free checking and other ways they're innovating local banking by visiting Broadway Bank at 1006 North Fiorella Street or call 830-538-9023. Free checking subject to approval. Conditions and restrictions apply. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Back here in San Antonio at Edgewood Veterans Stadium, Medina Valley with a 21-0 lead over Memorial. Dawson Grove ready to boot this ball away. Aaron Hernandez and Rene Jimenez back deep to receive as Grove with a high end-over-end -end kick that's going to be taken Fair caught inside the 20 by number two, Tony Hernandez, and that will give Memorial first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Well, There's a fourth possession for Memorial. The Panthers have had it four times. Oh, this is a fifth possession. The Panthers have had it four times and have scored three times. Memorial's last drive ended on a fumble. They're going to go with four wide receivers way out here to the right, one to the left here. Lozano out of the shotgun, empty backfield. First and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Lozano takes a snap, looking to throw. Fires complete. Out number 13, looking for some running room. Gets up to the 25, gets a couple of yards, maybe one yard gain on the play. That was Ronaldo Resendez on the reception, picks up. Two yards, it'll bring up second and eight. Got his legs chopped out from under him by number 12, Modulin, coming up from his free safety spot. They're going to go with that same formation. They send four guys out to the right. It's basically like a small diamond formation that they have out there. One wide receiver, Alan Hernandez out to the left. Lozano out of the shotgun with an empty backfield. Takes a snap, looking to throw. Same play. Hits her out over to the right, complete, gets up to the 30, 31 yard line where he's brought down. That was number three, Eduardo Zer, or that was actually number four, Angel Castro on the play. And it's a pickup of four yards. It's going to bring up third down and five. Number 16, J.J. Marty on the stop there for the Panthers. So third and short upcoming, third down and four for Memorial. Lozano out of the pistol, takes the snap, looking to throw. Man coming after him under pressure, steps up, and he's going to get sacked back inside the 25-yard line. Big play for the Panther defense, and it's going to bring up fourth and about 11. Zach Hecker put the pressure on him, and he turned and wanted to spin away from him. And Isaac Santos right there on the spot, going to credit both of them with that sack, number 63 Hecker, number 44 Santos. Goes of a... Loss of seven yards on the play. It's going to be fourth and 11. When I saw Hecker going in there that untouched, I thought they were going to run a screen play, I but was there too. was nobody there. No, you're right because the, the 
the man that was lined up over him just kind of chipped him and let him go. Perez ready to punt it away. He gets it off. Uh, kind of a dead duck that takes a memorial bounce and will go out of bounds at around the Medina Valley 45-yard line. We'll see where they spot the football. They will spot it at the Medina Valley 47-yard line where it'll be first and 10. Again, no ret no return yards for the Panthers. He kicked that directional, kicked it towards the sidelines. Panthers never had a chance for any return yards. So the Panthers will come out here with a 21-0 lead. 5.41 to go here in the first half. Panthers will show from the shotgun here. Gibson is the lone back. They'll send trips out to the right, one wide out to the left side. Takes the snap, hands the ball. Gibson up the middle with a head of steam across midfield down to the Memorial 48-yard line. Picks up five yards on the play, and it's going to bring up second down and five. Junior Nathan Palacio on the stop, dragging Gibson down, but not before Gibson gets five yards. So second down and five here for Medina Valley. Out of the gun, they send trips to the right. Gibson the lone back again. Child looking to throw. Steps up, fires out right side. Complete first down up to the 40. Made the first man miss and the second across the 35 and down to about the 31, 32-yard line. Good pitch and catch that time. And Medina Valley with another first down. I believe that was Sotelo again on the reception for the Panthers. And he's pretty hard to bring down when he's out in the open on his own and gets ahead of steam. Lena Valley has found something here with that tight end out there yep. in that soft spot. Yeah, that's his third catch of the evening, or fourth catch of the evening so far. First down, looking to throw. Child fires it out in the flat this time complete. And I, I believe that was Masters out of the backfield making the reception. He's going to get no gain on the play, maybe a yard. No gain, it'll be second and ten. Well, and the play was disrupted at the beginning. The snap was a little low. Child bobbled it a little bit, and that allowed the – defensive men to cover to close in on Masters and he didn't get that first step because if he gets that first step we know how dangerous he can be come out here in the gun Gibson the lone back three wide out to the left one to the right side Medina Valley moving right to left four minutes to go first half takes the snap looking to throw fires complete that's number 82 on the reception Trey Marty and he's going to be short of the first down but it's going to be a good Gain on second down. It's going to bring up third and four. Gang tackled out there on the end, leading the Chargers number 54 for the Minuteman, Jimmy Trevino. Good job of Marty catching that ball in pressure. And when the pressure came to him, he just went down. Didn't, didn't want to force the issue. Didn't want to turn the ball over. Gain of six. It's third and four here out of the gun. Trips out to the left again. Child takes the snap, hands the ball. Gibson. Trying to navigate his way through. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. A pickup of three. It's going to bring up fourth and one here. And I'm, I'm almost positive Medina Valley is going to go for this here. Yeah, Edward Zaragoza on the stop there for the minute, man. Ball spotted at the Medina or at the Memorial 23 yard line. Medina Valley going to go for it here on fourth down and one. I wouldn't be surprised to see Gibson get it up the middle. Got two wide out to the left here. Gibson, the lone down back, takes the snap, hands it Gibson up the right side. He's going to have the first down and a little bit more. Gets down to the 20-yard line, a pickup of three, but first and 10, Medina Valley. You got number 25 on the stop there, Alan Sanchez. But that's almost too easy for Gibson when it's short yep. yardage like that and you got that big offensive line. All he's got to do is just get momentum leaning forward. He's going to get the first down. First and 10, Panthers ball at the Memorial 20-yard line. 2.20 to go here in the first half. Benina Valley trying to eat that clock down and get another score in before halftime here. Three wide out to the left. Child takes the snap, looking to throw. Steps up, fires it over the middle. Complete. Did he what make the catch. catch? He did make the catch. That's Trey Marty in there. Made the catch between defenders. Got hammered as he caught the ball, but it's a 20-yard pass and catch touchdown from Child to Trey Marty in Medina Valley with a 27-0 lead. And you and I had to look because he got hit as soon as the ball got there. We wanted to make sure he hung on to the ball. That was a good throw of hitting Marty on the run and a great catch yep. pre under pressure for 
the senior number 82, Trey Morty. That's back-to-back -back passes yep. to him. Yeah, that, that's a, that was a great catch by Trey out there in the end zone. Grove on to tack on the extra point. Good snap. Hold down. Kick is up, and it is good. So a minute 59 to go first half. Medina Valley 28. Memorial nothing. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in a moment. The Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Todd Drake Wynn Funeral Home in Castroville, Texas, has been providing funeral services to families in the Medina Valley and surrounding areas for many generations. Todd Drake Wynn Funeral Home is proud to support the broadcast by the Medina Valley Broadcast Network for the athletes and students participating in this event. Go Panthers! Todd Drake Wynn Funeral Home, Castroville, Texas. You may view obituaries at Tondre, T O N D R E Gwynn, G U I N N dot com, or visit the Facebook page of Todd Drake Wynn Funeral Home to view funeral notices. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. Medina Valley with a 28 to nothing lead over Memorial. A minute 59 to go first half. Grove ready to kick it away. Kickoff brought to you by Royce Grove Oil Company and Exxon Stations. Hernandez and Jimenez back deep to receive for Memorial. As Grove puts his foot into it, a low line drive kick that's going to bounce and be taken by Jimenez inside the 10 up to the 15, gets up to the 19, and he is going to be brought down by a host of Panther defenders, and he'll, they'll give him forward progress to the 20, first and 10 Memorial. Well, at that, that time it was J.J. Marty on the stop there for Medina Valley, and I guess he got tired of his brother getting all the accolades. He just caught the touchdown pass. The little brother says, let me get into the action here also. Minute 51 to go. We'll see what Memorial does here. They have all three timeouts remaining. You've got to be careful if you're Memorial. You cannot turn the ball no. over here. They'll send three wide out to the right, one to the left side, one lone back here for Lozano. Medina Valley jumped. They're going to fire this one up left side. Almost made the catch. That was number 20, the intended receiver, Blaze Lara. Offside called against Medina Valley. and You know, Lozano's seen that twice that he's got the free play. Just heave ho it up there and let his guy try to make the catch. No no can do, but it'll be first down and five. And Henry was on coverage there, but he never turned back to look for the ball. So that's a good job by the quarterback. Seen he had a free play. Go for it all. First down, five yards to go here for the Minutemen. Three wide out to the right side. Medina Valley offside again. They're going to fire it up deep left side, and that's incomplete, but it's going to give them a first down. So two plays, two penalties, first down and 10 Memorial. Panthers a little over anxious here. Need to sit back and relax a little bit. You have a 28-point lead, under two minutes left to go here before half. You cannot let the Minutemen put points on the board here. No, you're exactly right, Maureen. First down and 10 here as Memorial comes out. Three wide receivers out to the left side of the formation. Lozano out of the pistol, looks to the sideline for the play. Memorial with three timeouts remaining in a minute 47 to go. They move left to right. Lozano takes the snap. They're going to hand the ball off, looking to go over the right side of the line. That's number 21 on the carry. And he's only going to get about four yards on the play. It's going to bring up second down and six. Memorial not in any kind of hurry here. As the clock ticks down under a minute 30 to go. Jared Marty and Taylor Weir on the stop for the Panthers. Three wide receivers out to the right here. They'll send one out to the left in the formation. Second down and six upcoming. The ball is at the Memorial 34-yard line. Takes a snap looking to throw. With some time, sets up, fires, picked off by Charlie Marsh at the 40-yard line, cuts it back into the 35-30, carrying a man inside the 25 down to the 21-yard line. Great job by Charlie Marsh, and I don't think Lozano ever saw him there because he threw that right to Charlie Marsh. And Medina Valley with a turnover, a minute one to go. Chance to put up seven more points yeah. here before the half. Marsh from his linebacker situ from his linebacker spot just floated back a little bit, kind of staying in traffic, and as soon as the ball was thrown, he cut off in front of the receiver for the interception. And that's what we said Memorial couldn't do here before halftime was give Medina Valley another chance to put points on the board because yep. the Panthers – 
are going to get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, you're exactly right. So that right. the Panthers can double up right here at the end of the first half and start the second and half. how about Marsh? Did you see him give a piggyback ride to one of their linemen? Number 77. So Medina Valley comes out of the sideline here, first and 10. They're going to hand the ball to Gibson right over the middle, bouncing it outside with some room to run, still on his feet to the end zone. Touchdown, Medina Valley. How about James Gibson with his second touchdown run of the evening, a 21-yard touchdown run, and that he man ran, is just unstoppable. He ran through three tacklers there, and and it never slowed him down. And that shows you cannot arm tackle that young man. He he is a load to bring down, and he is a big weapon for the Panthers. Yeah, and we've seen him all year just run through tacklers all year long. And you know you got to wrap him up if you want to bring him down. And we've seen him once he gets about five yards past the line of scrimmage and gets his full head of steam. He is very very hard to bring down. And we've seen him just level defenders already. He don't avoid contact. No, not at all. He'll put his shoulder right into you. Grove's extra point kick is up, and it is good. We'll stay right here with 47 seconds to go. Your new score, Medina Valley 35, Memorial 0. And, you know, Medina Valley, with without that uh, turnover there, it's only a 28 to – Nothing lead, but the Panthers now with 35 to nothing lead here after that turnover right before halftime. Yeah, one play drive there. Yep. Gibson all on the ground there. And Marsh with the interception, the Panthers turn it into seven points so and extend the lead to 35 to nothing. And for Memorial here, I know you're down 35 to nothing, but you can't mess around with this ball. You cannot let Medina Valley have the ball one more time here before half. You need to go into halftime, settle down a little bit, and just play it in quarters. You know, yep. if you come back and you can establish something in the third quarter, win the third quarter, win the fourth quarter, you've accomplished something. Yeah, and, and I would I would not put it past Memorial here to get this football, put a knee down, and just try to get into the locker room here down 35 to nothing. As we talked about earlier, Medina Valley going to get the football to start the second half. Grofe ready to kick it away. He's got it teed up. This kickoff brought to you by Royce Grofe Oil Company and Exxon Stations. Hernandez and Jimenez back deep to receive for the Minutemen. As Dawson Grove ready, he puts his leg into it. A high end over end kick. Be fielded by Jimenez at the 22 yard line. Starts up to the 25, looking for some room. Gets up to the 30, and he's brought down right at the 30 yard line. We're to be first and 10 Memorial. You know, Jared, and what I like about the Panthers on special teams, you see a lot of the starters that are on defense out there. On special teams, so that that shows how much you take in uh, how much you respect the special teams when you got your starters out there on defense, out there on the kickoffs. Yeah, because a lot of times you'll see some of the second stringers and stuff in there on kickoffs, but when you have your starting defense basically out there, that just shows they're out there for their tackling ability. Memorial out of the gun here; they're just going to hand the ball off, coming around the right side. So actually, it's a quarterback keeper. By Lozano over on the left side, it was one of those read plays. He pulled it back out, gets it back to the line of scrimmage, and I, I wonder if they'll even snap the ball one more time here before halftime. 20 Ta seconds and counting to go here. The Taylor play. Weir on the stop, and that time he, it was that RPO, and it looked like he probably should have handed that ball off because yeah. he ran into three men waiting for him. And they are not going to snap the ball again. That is going to run run it out, so – your score at halftime, Medina Valley 35, Memorial 0. As the clock shows 0 for halftime, good start here for the Panthers. We'll go ahead and take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we will continue here in just a moment. Visit MVBN.net for great articles on all your favorite coaches, players, and more at MVBN.net, the official website of the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. QRC Health Mart Pharmacy is the pharmacy for Castroville. QRC Health Mart Pharmacy has an experienced staff with over 20 years of patient care, offering a full-service pharmacy for all of your prescription, specialty, diabetic, and over-the-counter needs, including free blood pressure monitoring and a convenient drive through Most major insurance companies and plans accepted. Open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 1 on Saturday. QRC Health Mart Pharmacy, here to stay. 408 Highway 9. West in Castorville.
At North Park Chevrolet in Casterville, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. We're at halftime. Medina Valley with a 35 to nothing lead over Memorial. And it got started early here. Medina Valley came out on defense, forced Memorial to a three and out, only four yards of offense. Medina Valley got the ball, took it downfield. Uh, Jacob Salas took it in on a Nine-yard touchdown run. Uh, the Panthers would get stopped on their next possession, but they get the ball back. Um, they they take it in on a 25-yard run by James Gibson. Uh, made it 14 to nothing at the time. Um, then you'd see uh, Morales, Diego Morales, with a uh, four-yard touchdown run on a sweep play. Made it 21 to nothing. Then uh, you had a great catch by Trey Marty. Good pass and catch by Alec Child and Trey Marty on a touchdown pass for about 24 yards, made it 28 to nothing. An interception by Charlie Morsh with about a minute one to go, set up Medina Valley on one play. James Gibson right up the middle on the right side of the line, took it all the way to the house, 20 yards for a Panther touchdown. That brought us to our 35 to nothing score. Memorial not able to get a whole lot going offensively. As we've seen all year, nobody really able to stop James Gibson and that offense from Medina Valley. When Gibson gets going and Medina Valley goes with that play action, they start to be able to throw the football as well. Panthers very dangerous right now, looking very good. Hopefully they can maintain it in that second half, get out of here unscathed going into Alamo Heights next week. Well, and and the one time that Medina Valley didn't score on offense, you saw Medina Valley go into the spread more or less and and throw the ball a little bit. That's not their bread and butter. We even said it after the punt because – they put good pressure on Child. They actually tipped the ball, and they gave the ball to Memorial on Medina Valley side of the field in, yep. in the plus territory. But the defense is, has played really great. Uh, the quarterback for Memorial is, hasn't gotten much help from his receivers. They, they've dropped a lot of balls that yeah. the majority of them were thrown where they could have been first downs, and they didn't stretch the chains. And, and that puts a lot of pressure on them because their defense is – well, I say their defense has been out there – Quite a bit because their offense, I believe, only has two first downs. Yeah, this whole first half. No, you're you're right, and and I mentioned that earlier in the ball game that a, a lot of the balls that Lozano's thrown have been very catchable. His receivers have dropped some of them. They've gone through their hands. The only really mistake that he made was that last throw to Charlie Marsh there with about a minute to go on the interception. Other than that, he's thrown the ball very well. His receivers just haven't helped him out any in this ball game. And I, I want to talk a second about the offensive line play for Medina Valley. They've done an outstanding job opening holes for Gibson. The two touchdown runs he had, one of them he was untouched. The second one, there was a huge gap for him to get through. And after that, he did the rest with himself running over and through about two or three guys. Um, the one the one series we saw where it was three plays, you had two end arounds that worked very well, the outside of the line, sealing off the, the outside for those – running backs to get around the end. The, the offensive line's played very well in this game, ha- as they have all year. Well, and, and when you watch, when you see the plays out there happening, you know, we, we've had the offensive line there twice for the coaches' show, the yep. first show of the year, and then two weeks ago before we played Uvalde, we had them there. And we asked them, what are you keying on? What are you looking for? And and all of them said, well, we, we'd rather run block except – one and that was Mr. Valenzuela. Yeah. I think he, or no, Mr. Villafane. Yep. I think he said he'd rather pass block. But you're seeing what Medina Valley likes, their offensive line likes to do. And when you, when Jared says they go wide and get the corner, that means what the what the guard and the tackle are doing is they're chipping inside, freeing up the defensive line to where they can go down and chip a linebacker or a defensive back. And that's what's making the plays happen outside. That's why Medina Valley's getting yards outside because. The, the offensive line is chipping at the line of scrimmage and then getting the block downfield, and that's when you get the big runs, and that's what the Panthers are doing. Now, when you do when you, we've had drop back in the past, you've seen some good passes thrown by Alec Child. It's the first time that I can remember tonight 
that he's looked through his progressions yep. and not just made a decision when the ball is being snapped. Hey, I'm definitely throwing here regardless. He's looking through decisions. Probably one of the best plays he ever what he made all night is when he when we had the ball down there in Memorial Territory when he didn't throw the ball. Yep. He looked off his first two receivers, didn't find a room, got five yards. Well, we talked earlier in the year about that, that you know he picked out where he was going with the football before he even snapped it, and he'd just take the snap and throw it up, sometimes into double and triple coverage. It never came back to bite him, but those are things you can't do against teams of the caliber you're going into the next two weeks. And he's we've seen him mature over the last few weeks. I know against Kennedy, when they put him in the shotgun, he had more options to throw to. He was forced to go through his progression. Well, now you're seeing him out of that wing-back offense that they run where you only have one or two guys running routes, but he is looking to both guys before he makes his decision. So we've kind of seen him mature over the last few weeks, and that's a good sign for the Panthers going into Alamo Heights and Tyvee because, as we know, after this, these next two games are for the district title. And right now, Tyvee, Heights, and Medina Valley, all three are 4-0 and in district. Heights and Tyvee play each other tomorrow night. That's a huge game. But when you have the three teams that are vying for the district championship playing each other the last three weeks of the season, that makes for some exciting football in, in the last three weeks. Well, there's identical records across the board. 4-0 yep. in district, 6-1 and overall. Yep. In the Express News Sub-5A, you have Kerrville, Tyvee ranked 2 you have Alamo Heights ranked four, and you have Medina Valley ranked sixth. So this this district right here in sub in 5A and below have three teams in the top seven, and they're all can make some damage in the playoffs. You know, you just have to see what happens and, and who you draw in the other districts. But just to get back to this game, you're seeing a, of some different people in, in the action. You're seeing Trey Marty getting into the action, throwing him the ball. He's made two catches, both of them in traffic. Yep. You can't talk enough about the one he made in the end zone because there was double coverage. And you got to give Alec Child credit because he led Marty just perfect. And as soon as Trey caught the ball, he was hit pretty hard. We were wondering if he was going to hold on to the ball. He held on to the ball for a touchdown. And Garrison Garzan had, had mentioned, you know, after that play, uh, Garrison's part of the JV. He's the kicker and, and – and, uh, one of the wide receivers for the Panthers. And he even said during practice, he's one of the guys that have some of the best hands on the varsity team. And he's getting a chance to show it now. And the reason he's getting a chance to show it is because you're seeing more action here against teams like Memorial and Kennedy where you can ex experiment a little bit and get new guys in there. Yeah, you're exactly right. We saw Diego Morales with a touchdown run, not someone we've seen run the ball a whole lot this year. Um one of the players we haven't talked much about in the last few weeks is, is Caden Hernandez. He came up from the JV squad, had a great game against Bernie Champion with Logan Masters not having his ankle issue. He's been in there a little more. Hernandez more out of a slot position. Uh, he's somebody to watch out for that can be very dangerous as this season progresses too. He's kind of one of those wild cards that, hey, we've got this speedster in our back pocket also. Watch out for him as well. Well, and I think you're going to see a lot of him in the second half. You're going to see Logan Masters – Pretty much, it should be. He 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 shouldn't hit the field in the second no. half, and neither should James Gibson. I'm not too sure. I don't put number nine under center out yep. there. Charlie Marsh and get him some action because he is your backup. And then what that also does is you can put somebody else on the defensive side in Charlie Marsh's spot if you're going to concentrate him on the offense. And another big receiver we hadn't talked about, and he's made some big catches, and he's made some catches during the year, and that's number eighty. Aaron Sotelo, Sotelo I mean, yep. he, he looks like another number 80 I can remember in, in the NFL. He, he, he looks like Jeremy Shockey out there. Yep. He's a big, imposing player, and when he gets the ball in space, he's not afraid to run into danger. He's not. He don't go out of bounds. He goes towards the guy that's coming at him. No, you're right, and they'll line him up in the slot and, and not at the true normal tight end position. They'll, they'll line him up wide off the ball, let him play as a slot receiver out there and get in some space, get him the football hard to bring down. We've seen him yards after catch in this game fight for some extra yardage, and one player we haven't got to call his name is Garrett Leggett. And he's one of the main wide receivers for this Panther bunch here. Very tall receiver, a lot of height advantage. The one pass they did throw to him, he was covered very well by uh, Rene Jimenez over on the far side of the field. But Leggett's one of those players they haven't got to involve much in the game that, that 
I think that he's going to be a key factor later on in the season. Well, you have McCauley that Medina Valley hasn't gotten involved that much either. But if you look at the, the brighter part of that, you're getting other people yep. involved, and that's just another thing that Alamo Heights and, and Kerrville Time you have to scout because you're not just relying on two receivers. You're relying on five or six of them right now. And what I've liked about these last three games, and we've seen it work in games that have been close against Bernie and, and Bernie Champion, we've seen the screen passes, and I don't remember yep. seeing one of those in the last three weeks. No. And that's something that you don't want to show. You hope Alamo Heights and, and Kerrville Time you don't think about it. But when you throw that screen pass to Gibson, we've seen all year how big that is. I yeah. Mean, he, he's, turned, he's turned them all into big games. Well, and if you get – and what we've seen, if Gibson gets loose with some space in front of him, if you can get him the football and a screen pass with a couple of blockers, he's very dangerous. He's dangerous as it is just handing him the football. But if you have – give him the ability to get going and get his full head of steam – you're not going to bring him down very easy. It's going to take a couple of defenders to get there, and if you try to arm tackle him, he'll run right through you. Well, the thing about him is he's not fast, but he's quick. He reaches top speed quick. And, and you know, as, as you said, when you get him out in space, if he gets through that initial wall, there is not one guy going to bring him down. No. I mean, th there hasn't been all year. No. And there's a lot of them that have tried. And there's a lot of them that have been laid on their back yeah. and, and haven't gotten up. And, and I'm not exaggerating. And, and you're shaking your head. Yep. Yes, I've seen it. And, you know, the Panthers right now, Jared, have a great mixture on the offensive side of the ball. You're seeing them utilize more. And, and I can remember talking to, to young Sosa Eric last year. And after the season was over, that heartbreaking loss we had in the playoffs to Austin McCallum, which – we thought, you know, we, we were with Austin McCallum midway through the third quarter, and they finally pulled away. They just wore us down because they, they kept pounding the ball at us and wore us down. But we talked about the creativity of the offensive uh, output by the Panthers, and he said, we're getting there. I've only implemented, implemented about 55% of the 100% I've wanted, and we're gradually moving on and getting more stuff, and you're seeing the result of that right now. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Maury. And we're going to go ahead and take a break, and then we will come back. You're listening to Panther Football here on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network, and we will continue in just a moment. All sports. We currently broadcast football, volleyball, basketball, softball, and baseball. We not only serve Medina Valley, we also can broadcast other schools in the area in multiple sports. If your business is interested in having us broadcast a single game or a season and you want to be part of the action, contact Jeff Stivers at 830-931-4504 or email him at jeff at mvbn.net. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks and fountain drinks. Always convenient, well lit with clean restrooms. Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984. And a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. Security State Bank has one simple goal, to be the best bank possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. We believe in superior customer service, active community involvement, fair and honest business ethics, and loyalty. We've been in Castorville for a year now, and we've enjoyed growing with you. Come by 1726 Highway 90 East or call us at 830-538-9898. A real person will answer because that's how we do business, with common courtesy and uncommon service. Bank online at securitystbk.com. Security State Bank, South Texas. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. From the time our alarm clock rings in the morning to when we turn the lights off at night. Electricity plays an important role in our lives. But most of the time, we don't even think about it. And you don't have to, because the employees at Medina Electric Cooperative are behind the scenes making sure you get reliable, affordable electricity delivered to your house or business. Your cooperative is here for you, and we have been since 1938. Connect with Medina Electric on Facebook, Twitter, or at medinaec.org. Two, three, hit. More coverage of your high school teams. Let's just say we keep it real. And you know this. 
man. This is the KMAX Sports Network. From West Texas all the way to the bio and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas. All this is the KMAX Sports Network, the bringing your teams to you. We're back here at Edgewood Veteran Stadium. 35 to nothing is your halftime score. Medina Valley uh, leading Memorial. And as I mentioned, this is Thursday night football, so not, not many scores I can give you from around high school football, but the, the few that I can I'm going to find for you here. I know that Medina Va or Mari's been paying attention to the uh, uh, pro game going on. I think the Texans are playing the Dolphins. Texans tonight, are up 14 to 7. Midway through the second quarter. And, and there's another game. Shanley's favorite team, West Virginia's playing Baylor tonight. Her favorite team, yeah. Um, it's her favorite team because she graduated from Yeah, my, my girlfriend Shannon was a Baylor alum, and they're getting beat 44 to nothing by West Virginia no, in the they third ain't. quarter. Oh, yeah, they are. No, they ain't. Um, just some other games from around the area that are going on tonight. Uh, Johnson High School beating Roosevelt 3 to nothing. In the second quarter, the Highland Owls beating Lanier 7 to nothing at halftime. Uh, Marshall High School, 19, Holmes 14. That, that game's in the second quarter. Burbank losing to Wagner tonight, 39 to nothing. Southwest Dragons beating Harlandale, 14 to 7. Uh, the Cuero Gobblers beating Eastside Memorial, 35 to nothing. And those are all the games going on around the area tonight. You weren't tonight. lying, were you? No, it's 44, 44 to nothing. 44 to nothing. Yeah, you thought I was kidding. I no, did. I really they, did. She just told me that. I knew she wasn't joking if she I, told me that. I would guess Will Greer and uh, Dana, uh, Holmgren or Holderson or whatever his name is for West Virginia, I guess they're taking out their frustrations from that loss previous game out on poor Baylor. Yeah, you're you're exactly right. Um there were some big surprises in college football over the week. The big one, Purdue beating Ohio State. Not and just beating them, manhandling, no, I, shutting their offense completely I down. I watched the end of that game, and, and some of those Purdue receivers and running backs just all over Ohio State there at the end of that game when the Buckeyes made a push to get in there, and Purdue just, just put a hurt on them. Yeah, that was a big game. Big implications on the on the four man playoff four team playoff down the line. Yeah, because now you have you have a one loss team in there because you've got Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame all all with no losses in the top three. Then you have LSU in there at number four. You have Texas went to number there. six. Yeah, you have Texas in there. Who Georgia's is a number Georgia's number five. Only, yeah, with a one loss, and LSU still has to play Alabama. This year, in a, in a couple of weeks, I yeah, think. Yeah, and you have Oklahoma sitting there with one loss. Yep. You could have – you could – Michigan. You could maybe have a one-loss Oklahoma team and a one-loss Texas team playing in the Big 12 championship down the line if both teams take care of business. And you want to talk about a barn burner? If you thought that first game was good, just what do you think the second matchup between those two teams would be? Yeah, Unbelievable. And and the one we missed in there, number five, Michigan, only loss was to Notre Dame at the beginning of the season. And that those are your rankings. Number four, LSU. Number five, Michigan. Six, Texas. Seven, Georgia. Eight, Oklahoma. And then Florida in there at number nine. And, I mean, that's a – Ohio State dropped down to number 11, but that is a – that's a stout top ten there in college football. And you know that Alabama has to play LSU still – and then you also have the SEC championship later this year that could potentially be Alabama or LSU against one loss, Georgia. Well, and you have, uh, which I don't think they're going to make a difference, but you have the defending national championship, Central Florida, sitting there undefeated at number 10. And they've stayed at number and 10. And they've stayed at number 10. And you, and you have South Florida undefeated. They're sitting down there at number 20. Well, and here's the deal with them. They play each other at the end of the year. Yeah. That's the last game of the year. So one of them will have a loss. But Central Florida hasn't lost a game in two years. Yeah. And, and just watching them in, in the bowl game last year against Auburn, I, I said, well, they're gonna their magic's going to run out because Auburn, the SEC, they're going to manhandle Central Florida. No. That wasn't the case. No. It was the other way around, and, and they shut down the number one running back in the SEC, Carryon Johnson. Yeah, and, and you know, here I'm just going to give my take on that 
whole, you know, they don't play in a good conference thing. You play with what you got, You play right? with what you got, but, but here's the deal with that is that Central Florida wants to make their case that they should be in the playoff. Where he, well, here's the thing with that. They don't play a tough schedule. If they played in a Big 12 conference or an SEC, yes, they can play with a team like Auburn for one game. But if you had to play that same schedule week in and week out, you they don't have the depth to be able to play that, which is what these other schools like Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, LSU, Georgia, they all have the depth to be able to compete week in and week out. These smaller schools like that, take Boise State, for example, back when, when they beat Oklahoma in that bowl game and, and went undefeated. Yeah, they can play them one game, but if they had to do that two weeks in a row, it's not going to happen, I don't believe. And, and that's where I think that their argument gets stifled because well, people see that. You can do it once, maybe twice. But, you know, being an Oklahoma fan, I was kind of disappointed when that matchup came out because Oklahoma had nothing to gain and everything to lose. If you beat Boise State, well, you should beat up on the little guy. If you lose to yeah. him, oh, ha, 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 you got beat. Well, i tell you what, not only did Boise State throw the kitchen sink, they, throw, they threw the dishwasher. <laughs> The dryer, <laughs> everything at Oklahoma they, that game. They threw the Statue of Liberty. Oh. They threw the hook and ladder. It was all in that ball game. Like you, it, it doesn't. That was an exciting game to watch. Oh, like I'll it? never forget it. And like I'm not putting down Boise State, but I'm just making the case that if they played this a tough schedule week in and week out, they wouldn't have been in that situation. No. <laughs> but and and, 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 and I I'll sure root, to, and, and you and I are the same. We we'll root for the underdog. I like yeah. that. You know, every once in a while that happens. Appalachian State and Michigan, that was the greatest thing I ever saw, well, one of them. Well, how about but, Old Dominion this year against Virginia Tech? But I still have to say the greatest thing ever was a 16 beating a 1 in the NCAA tournament this year. Oh, that was unbelievable. That, I couldn't believe when, what I was watching when it was happening. But those are, those are the things that you watch sports for, those underdog stories, because – a little team comes out of nowhere and proves itself. I never would have thought that would happen. No. Never. No, never. And, and it hadn't happened since they went to a 64-team format. That was the first time. I think one seeds were, what, 112-0 and 0 yeah. going into that? And then here it happens. And so uh, back to the football game that, here. That's why you play the game yep. and you don't do it on paper. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's why we said here, Medina Valley and the Harris Poll, 29-and-a-half, 30-point favorites. I don't care what that says. You take yep. care of business here on the field because we've seen strange things happen. Yep. We, we saw Medina Valley going into a state championship game, 21-point underdogs at Dangerfield. Yep. Well, we saw how that ended up. And I think what a Dangerfield had given up somewhat eight points all season yes. defensively. That's still – and when you watch, you know, this – now the state championships are all covered on Fox Southwest. And thank They're, you, Fox Southwest, because that's fun to watch yeah, those playoffs. It is fun to watch, but Craig Way has talked on those games about the Medina Valley Dangerfield game from 84, that that is still one of the biggest upsets in Texas high school football state championship history. And I was born the next year. I was born in 85. I didn't get to see it, but I remember that uh, – I remember growing up when I got into seventh grade. See, we didn't have peewee football when I was growing up. When we got into seventh grade, that was the first thing they showed us was a tape of the state championship. That was the first thing I remember about Medina Valley football was that they showed us that, that video in seventh grade before we started practice. I'm getting our phones blown up here because we talked about basketball a little bit. And then one of the, <laughs> lo and then, then one of the Longhorn fans just texted me and said, thought Texas beat OU. They did beat OU. Did I say Oklahoma beat Texas no, or not? No, and that was a pretty thrilling game to That's watch. That's what I that said. A rematch would be nice. You never know. But if what? I said OU beat Texas this year, I was mistaken. It was a great game. <laughs> Texas won 48-45. And if you stepped away from the TV disappointed being a fan of either team, then you're not a football fan. No, because that was, that was a great game to watch. Um, back here to the game at hand, 35 to nothing. Medina Valley leading Memorial as uh, the Panthers have come out of the locker room, stretching, getting warmed up here for the second half. There's still about three and a half minutes to go here before uh, halftime is over as the Memorial Band is performing on the field at the moment. Um, Medina Valley going to get the ball first to start the second half. I would expect to see their first team offense for one series. 
I would <laughs> expect to see them for a possession, score a touchdown or whatever they do, then get, get them out of the ball game. Well, and what that's, I would expect that's exactly what we talked about two weeks ago when we came here and played Kennedy. But we were shocked because the first team didn't come out there no. on offense for this first series. But it's a different scenario. Kennedy got the ball to start the, the second half, I believe, yep. two weeks ago where Medina Valley is going to get it. So we'll see what happens. But we've already seen already on the defensive side of the ball, we've mentioned a few new names that are getting some playing time in there. And there's nothing you can compare. I know you can practice it, but there's nothing to compare to game time situation. No, you're exactly right, Maury. And um, I would expect I would expect Gibson and Masters for the first drive, and then after that, I'd expect to see a lot of Caden Hernandez, Diego Morales, maybe Jacob Salas, but I doubt it. Um, he's one of your key running backs as well. Um, from that slot position, he runs the ball very well. They run that trap play to him and some some things like that, and, and with Pardo being hurt, he's just another valuable asset that you don't want to have an uh, injury bug bite going into next week. Well, and, and you're probably not going to see much of the offensive line. Valenzuela probably won't, you won't see. You won't see Nathan Trammell. You probably won't see Spencer Payne much, Josh McAllister, Jonah Barrow, uh, any of those starters on the offensive line. You probably won't see much in there because they've already done yeoman's work already, and it's only a half. So, you know, a lot of fresh faces, and that's like you said, we had Coach Sosa on there the first week, and he stated, and every coach since then has stated, with Medina Valley, it's next man up. Yep, absolutely. And they've all done a great job. The ones that have had to step on in have all been ready to go. And the big one that stands out to me was – Caden Hernandez coming into that champion game fresh off the JV coming straight up and he was thrown into the fire with Logan Masters out of that ball game he ran the ball very well hurdled some guy <laughs> and uh, you know and there was there's just a lot of things that um, have happened in Medina Valley just to has done a good job getting that next man in there and, and keeping things Jared, going. I, can't, oh my I God. can't read the last text I got from our friend Lou, who was harping on us already for but, but talking a little bit of basketball. But I want to say that that's why I was stumbling there at the end because Maury showed me that text message. I was reading it as I was talking. I was trying not to laugh. And our other Longhorn fan who, who said, you know, that I said Oklahoma beat Texas, which I don't think I did, but if I did, I apologized. He said they're, they're not looking ahead, but they're worried about Texas Tech coming up and – it doesn't matter. That matchup right there, Texas Tech and Texas, it, it's you could throw away the records. You can get, you can bet the over if it's if the over and under is less than a hundred because it's probably going to be a hundred and two to a hundred and one <laughs> yeah, in that you, ball game. You're right, and here comes Medina Valley back out on the field, and we're going to go ahead and take another quick break before we start the second half. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in just a moment. Articles on all your favorite coaches, players, and more at mvbn.net, the official website of the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Qualifications, rules, and limitations apply. Rates, rewards, and restrictions may vary by account. Contact institution for details. Tickets, popcorn, and sodas. That'll be $35. Cash or debit? Debit! I mean, I'd like to use my debit card, please. Uh, Can I do it? Okay. All right. Swiping now. What if paying with your debit card was always this exciting? Casasa Cashback is a free checking account that pays you for everyday debit card purchases every month you qualify. Plus, with ATM withdrawal fee refunds nationwide, that's a lot of extra cash to spend on whatever you like. Ask for free Casasa checking at Community National Bank. Bank. Member FDIC. Double T Outfitters offers deer, duck, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in Southwest Texas on over 20,000 low fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in Southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210 413 1597 or online at doubletheunting.com. We're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium as Medina Valley ready to receive the second half kickoff number 13 for Memorial Ronaldo Resendez teeing the ball up. And uh, this is first kickoff of the ball game here in the second half as Memorial was shut out there in the first half of this 
ball game. As he kicks it away, a high end-over-end kick that's going to be fielded at the 12-yard line, starts up field across the 20, and he can't get any farther than that. That was McCauley on the return. Gets it up to about the 24-yard line. It's going to be first and 10, Medina Valley. Brought down by number 22 there for the Minutemen, Roger Garza. And so we'll see what the Panthers send out on the field here to start the second half with a 35 to nothing lead. Panthers 4-0 in district play, looking to improve to 5-0 going into a game against Alamo Heights next week. That game Friday at Panther Stadium, 7.30 kickoff, 7 o'clock airtime. They'll come out here with a starting offense. Alec Child under center, no wide receivers. Gibson the only back. They'll send a man in motion, Salas, hands it to Gibson left side with some room, gets it up to the 30-yard line, falls across to the 31, a pickup of about six yards. It's going to bring up uh, second down and three, a seven-yard gain. 54 Trevino on the stop for the minute, man. So a good seven-yard pickup by Gibson on first down going over that left side of the line. Panthers come back to the line of scrimmage. No wide receivers again. They come in that slot back. Off offensive set. Hands the ball. Gibson with a lot of room to run. Gets it up across the 35-40, and he falls forward to the 44-yard line where they'll spot him a pickup of about 10 yards and a first down for the Panthers. Safety, Roger, Roger Garza on the stop. Good, uh, good play there by Gibson. Two runs and uh, about 20 yards for the offense for the Panthers, and it's first and 10 from the 44-yard line. Now they'll come out in the shotgun four wide. Two on each side of the formation. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Child fires it out, complete to Solace over on the left side, and he's going to get upfield for uh, about a three-yard gain. It's going to bring up second down and seven. Good open field tackle out there by Roger Garza. Salas had some room if he could make Garza miss, but Garza stayed with him. Short gain of about three and a half. Gets it up to the Medina Valley 47-yard line. They'll come back to the line of scrimmage here on second down and seven. They'll send trips out to the right, one wide out to the left side. Child out of the gun, takes the snap, hands the ball, Morales, and actually Child keeps it himself. Coming around the right side, still on his feet after a first down across the 40 and down to about the 36, 37-yard line. A good good run that time, designed run by Alec Child and another first down for the Panthers into Memorial Territory. Yeah, Nathan Palacio on the stop, but that was a good job by Salas carrying that fake. He carried out 15 yards down field, and they were still trying to tackle him and didn't realize he had the ball, didn't have the ball. So first and 10 Panthers, ball down to the 36-yard line of Memorial. No wide this time, child under center. Takes the snap, hands the ball, Masters left side. He's got room to run, tries to cut it to the outside, and he's taken down after a gain of eight yards. Gets it down to the 28-yard line. It'll bring up second down and two. Sophomore cornerback Rene Jimenez on the stop. Good open, another good open field tackle by the Minutemen. That time, if, if Masters could somehow make that guy miss, he had a lot of room after that because he was one of the last guys out there. That would have been nothing but green in front of him. Down to the 28-yard line here for the Panthers. 8.58 to go here in the third quarter as Medina Valley comes to the line of scrimmage. No wide here. Morales and Masters, the two backs behind Child in the formation. Now Alec going to change the play up at the line of scrimmage. Now looking to the sideline. Two on the play clock, and they're not going to get it off here. Did Medina Valley call timeout? Yes. They do. Right before the play clock showed one, so to avoid the delay of game, Medina Valley takes their first time out of the half. I don't know what was going on there. Child a little bit confused. He changed the play twice, and I, I don't know what he was looking for there. He, he checked off twice at the line of scrimmage, and I was watching our young man that's running the board, Garrison, and he's pointing at it. Look at the play clock. The play clock's running down, and and he got the call from the sideline coach. Sosa called the timeout. I don't think Alec. Alex even knew, you know, even glanced at what the time was on the on the play clock. Yeah, and the timeout brought to you by Peerless Equipment Company. Um, first timeout of the half for Medina Valley. They'll have two remaining. Memorial still with all three of theirs. This is the first uh, possession of the second half. 
And Medina Valley got the ball to start this half, and in about five plays, they moved it down to the 28-yard line. A couple of good runs from Gibson, um, and then a run from Masters and Alec Child quarterback keep, and Medina Valley's been on the move here to start the second half. They'll come out of the timeout here. It'll be second down and two to go. Morales, the lone back, they'll send a man in motion. From left to right, takes a snap. Child rolling out, looking to pass. Throws on the run, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Logan Masters, and then almost caught by Garrett Leggett, but it falls incomplete. It'll bring up third and two. Ball was thrown a little bit high. He had Masters out in the flat, and Masters had broke away from containment, but the ball was thrown a little bit behind him and a little bit high. But a good effort there of Leggett, seeing the ball tipped in the air, almost caught it on the rebound. So third down and two upcoming here. Ball at the Memorial 28-yard line. Under eight minutes to go. No wide receivers here for the Panthers. Child under center takes a snap. Hands the ball off to Salas right side. He's got a first down and more. Up across the 20, 15, cuts it inside to the 10, and he's brought down at the 10-yard line. So it will be first and goal. Medina Valley from the 10. A good run that time by Jacob Salas. Jimmy Trevino on the stop, but Salas doing a lot after contact. Got about five yards after contact, and he almost... Broke that for a touchdown. Yeah, he did. He wanted to go outside, cut it back inside, and got him some extra yards that way and tried to spin away from a couple of defenders. Managed to, as Mari said, get some yards after the initial contact. Panthers almost five minutes into this drive to start the second half. First down and goal from the 10. They'll spread it out here. Three wide out to the left. Trey Marty isolated out to the right. Child out of the gun, takes the snap, hands the ball to Morales up the middle, and he gets hit and brought down. A gain of two yards gets it to the eight. It'll be second down and goal. Yeah, that was a hard tackle there in the middle, and it was number 10 for the Minutemen, Jose Perez, and it looked like – Almost like he clotheslined <laughs> him in a way. Like he, he just drug him down. That was a big, vicious tackle inside by the Minutemen. He hit him right up high in the chest area and got his arm across there and just yanked him to the ground. Second down and goal from the eight-yard line. Morales, the lone back. They'll send Masters in motion. They'll hand it to him going around the left side. Tries to cut it upfield. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Medina Valley. An eight-yard run by Logan Masters on the end around. And Medina Valley with a 41 to nothing lead. Logan basically untouched. Once he got to the outside, we kind of looked at each other. and They weren't going to catch him when he got to the pylon. No, not, a, not at all. If, if he's going to be in a foot race with somebody to get to the outside, he's going to win it probably 99 times out of 100. He's, yeah. he's that quick. Five minutes and 40 seconds on that drive for Medina Valley, and they take the second half kickoff for a touchdown. And so Dawson Grove on to try to tack on the extra point. Grove's kick is up. And it is good. So with 6.20 to go in the third quarter, your score, Medina Valley 42, Memorial 0. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in a moment. Look for the Medina Valley Broadcast Network on Facebook. Like us, and you'll always get the latest on Panther sports and news from MVBN. Double T Outfitters offers deer, dove, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in southwest Texas on over 20,000 low-fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597 or online at DoubleTHunting.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here in San Antonio where Medina Valley leading Memorial 42 to nothing here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. Dawson Grove ready to kick it away, and the kickoff is brought to you by Royce Grove Oil Company and Exxon Stations. Hernandez and Jimenez back deep to receive for the Minutemen. And Grof with a squib kick, hits a man, fielded at the 33-yard line, and he put his knee down after he fielded it, and that's where Memorial will start first down and 10. Roger Garza just fielded it like a second baseman, or two way getting in front of the ball. It bounced off of him, but he had no problem recovering and went to a knee. So first down and 10 here for 
the minute man it looks like Medina Valley is going to keep their starting defense on the field here for the time being 555 to go in the third quarter a 42 to nothing Panther lead Lozano looks to the sideline for his play empty backfield takes the snap looking to throw fires it deep left side incomplete Great job there by number 14, Alan Hernandez, to lay out to try to make that play. Unfortunately, the Zano just overthrew him a little bit. Yeah, Dante Henry on the coverage for Medina Valley running step for step with him. And, Jared, you mentioned the first team out there. You need them to keep up their stamina because last week they only kind of played like half a game. So you need them to get back out there because they're not going to get no relief next week. No, you're exactly right. They're, you know, they're going to be playing the entire game against Heights and Tyvee. And those are situations where you, you can't get yourself wore down in the fourth quarter. Your, your conditioning is going to come into play there. Lozano going to throw, fires it out left side, and that was almost picked off by Marsh. And if he, could, if he picks that off, he is gone for a touchdown. But unfortunately, uh, the ball was thrown high. It goes incomplete. It will bring up third down and ten. Yeah, that time Charlie read it again. And if he gets that one, there's nobody in front of him. That's a pick six. 4.40 to go, third quarter. And so Lozano looking to the sideline for his play call here. They'll send trips out to the left. And that's fall. That <laughs> looked like a false start all the way. Pass is complete up to Hernandez. Gets across the 45, across midfield, and he's finally knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line. How was that not a false start? The, the man went in motion, and he actually started across the line of scrimmage before the ball was even snapped. And he was moving forward before the snap, but they did not see it. Modulin on the tackle, but a good third down conversion. Hernandez brings it in and turns it upfield for a good game. So first and 10 Memorial, that's their biggest play of the evening. Gets it down to the Panther 44-yard line. Lozano out of the shotgun, takes the snap, going to – Hand the ball off, trying to find some room around the left side, and he is gobbled up at the 45-yard line and dropped for a loss. It's going to bring up second down and 11. Dylan Fillinger on the stop there for the Panthers, number 21, one of the senior defensive ends there for Medina Valley. So second down and 11 upcoming. Lozano out of the pistol. Too wide on each side of the formation as they look to the sideline for the play call. Tony Hernandez, the lone back, right behind to the right of Lozano. Takes the snap, looking to throw. He's going to quarterback draw right up the middle, and he's going to get hit and brought down a gain of looks like three or four yards. It's going to bring up second down and or third down and eight, rather, for the Minutemen. Grant Snyder leading the charge there for Medina Valley. Grant, as always, having a good football game. He's always called in there on the tackle, always got his nose right in there. Fillinger also in there for Medina Valley. Right back to the line of scrimmage here. Lozano looking to the sideline now for the play. They come up there, try to get Medina Valley offside, and then they change the play up. 2.30 and counting to go third quarter. Third down and eight, and that's going to be a false start here against Memorial as that right tackle tried to go back into a pass block way too early. And third down and eight is going to become third down and 13. This has actually been a low penalized football game. Yes, it Medina has been. Valley with three for 15 yards. They were all three offside penalties. First false start of the game against Memorial. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Lozano fires over the middle, and number 13, Ronaldo Resendez, was not looking for the football as he ran a crossing route. Lozano threw it to him, and it actually hit him in the shoulder pad and wasn't even looking for the ball. That was another good pass where he didn't get help by his receiver. And I, I looked at you, and I, he never turned around and looked no, for the ball. No, he wasn't even looking for the ball, but, I mean, he couldn't have thrown it any better. No. He hit the guy on the, on the run. But it's going to bring up fourth down, and uh, Jose Perez is going to go ahead and try to punt this ball away. Panthers come after it, and they might have got a hand on it as that punt is shanked out of bounds. A lot of pressure there by the Panthers. I don't know if someone got a hand on it or not. But it's going to be Panther ball as it goes out of bounds at the Medina Valley 33-yard line. Dawson Grove was very close to blocking that punt right there for the Panthers. So it'll be first and 10, Medina Valley. 
A minute 30 to go, third quarter. Panthers with a 42 to nothing lead. We'll see here. And it looks like Alec Child and that Panther starting offense are coming right back out onto the field here for Medina Valley. Four wide receivers here as they come out in the shotgun. Two on each side of the formation. No James Gibson in the ball game. Child looking to throw under pressure. Now he's going to roll out to the right side. Throws on the run. Complete. Another That's catch. Good catch that time by number 82, Trey Marty, up to about the 42-yard line, a pickup of eight yards. It's going to bring up uh, second down and two. And that ball was thrown a little wide, and he brought that ball in in traffic once again. Third catch of the night for Marty, and all of them have been in traffic, and all of them have been great catches. Yep, they'll give him nine yards on the gain. Second down and one upcoming here. Good job by Child. That time he was under pressure, managed to roll out and get away from it and find a guy open downfield. No wide receivers here for the Panthers. Gibson back in the ball game. Takes a snap. Gibson gets it. Left side. Looking for some running room. Has it. And I think that's number 46 via Fain in there instead of Gibson. And he has a first down up to midfield. And he's a young man we talked about last week when the Panthers changed and took out the starting uh, lineup. We were looking and wondering where number 46 was because when he gets in there, he runs just like Gibson. He runs hard. Well, he looks like him, too. You know, he's a bigger-framed, uh, bodied young man who, who can get a little bit of a head of steam going like Gibson, and that will end the third quarter of play. Your score after three, Medina Valley 42, Memorial 0. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in just a moment. The K-Max Sports Network. When you put money in our bank, you started a chain reaction. We made an auto loan. A local car dealer sold a car. A car salesman got a commission. His wife bought groceries. The checker at the supermarket got a paycheck. You made that happen. Thanks. Come home to Castroville State Bank. Member FDIC. Visit us online at castrovillestatebank.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Welcome back here to Edgewood Veterans Stadium. As we go to the fourth quarter, we'll flip things around. The Panthers will now move right to left. Ball spotted right at midfield. Medina Valley with first down and ten upcoming here as they come straight to the line of scrimmage. They'll send one wide receiver way out to the left side of the formation. That's Sean Jones, the wide receiver out here. Takes the snap. Going to hand the ball off. That's number 33 for the Panthers on the carry. That is, well, there's no 33 on my roster Might have here. been 13. Was it, it Hernandez? Might have been Hernandez. Yeah. Right, I saw, the, I saw the jersey going the other way, and I thought it said 33 on it, but not 100% sure there. I know I saw a three. No, that's him right there. There's 33 on that jersey. Okay, that's the young man they moved up from the JV in, yep. pla in, in place of – Yep, that's Mr. Ledesma there. They'll send him in motion. This is Marsh on the keeper. He's in there at quarterback now, and he gets across the 45 down to about the 43-yard line, and it's going to bring up a third down and three yards to go. Jimmy Trevino on the stop, and they brought Ledesma up to fill the void for the injured – Wesley Pardo. And so Ledesma up here, like I said, not on, not on the roster yet, probably moved up uh, probably yesterday or the, the day before, just haven't updated the roster yet. Third down and three as you have Marsh in there at quarterback now under center. Two backs on third down. They'll take the snap, hands the ball off to Viafane, looking to bounce it outside, gets across the 40 and down to the 39-yard line to the 38, and it's a first down for Medina Valley, a five-yard pickup by Viafain. Draglin tacklers with him. Roger Garza, one of the tacklers for the Memorial Minutemen, but Viafain with a good hard run gets the first down. First down and 10, ball at the 39-yard line of Memorial. The Panthers on the move again, 10-23 and counting. Marsh out of the shotgun. They'll send trips out to the right. One man, Jones, out wide to the left side. Marsh out of the gun. Takes the snap, hands the ball off to Morales up the middle, and he's going to get gain of about three yards, gets it down to the 36-yard line where it'll bring up second down and seven. Johnny Zaragoza on the stop there, number 74 for the Memorial Minutemen. 
And as you're starting to see some different personnel mixing things up in there, Morales, who did score a touchdown earlier in this ball game, getting some carries now. You see Lexi Neeb check into the ball game as a receiver out here on the left side. For the Panthers, out of the gun, Marsh. Second down and seven upcoming. Takes the snap, going to run it himself up the middle. Tries to bounce it to the outside, and he's going to pick up about three or four yards on the play. Gets it down to around the 32-yard line. It'll bring up third and three. Drag down on the play by number 44, Nathan Palacio. So third down, three yards to go, 9-10 to go here in the ball game. Panthers back to the line of scrimmage here. Ball at the Memorial 32. Marsh changing things up at the line of scrimmage. Goes under center, takes the snap. Hands the ball off up the middle, and that's going to be a first down and a little bit more down to about the 26-yard line. And a first down again for the Panthers. I believe that was number 33 again in there in the carry. 44 once again on the stop there. Palacio once again for Memorial. Panthers just eating up clock here, Jer, just keeping the ball on the ground. Yep, 8.30 and counting to go. Ball down to the Memorial 26-yard line. Panthers continuing to move the ball in small increments, three and four yards a carry. Marsh under center takes that snap, hands the ball off Ledesma going around the right side, and he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Drop for no gain, second down and 10. Zachariah, number 21 for the stop for Memorial. So second down and 10 upcoming here for the Panthers. Under eight minutes to play in the ball game. Panthers will send one wide receiver out to the left. Marshall sent a man in motion, takes the snap, hands the ball off, trap play Ledesma. He's got some room to run. First down and more down to about the five yard line. Drag down. I'll take that back, drag down inside the 15 to about the 11-yard line. And that is where Medina Valley will have first down and 10. Looks like he's spotted around the 13. Roland Carrizales on the stop. Good hard running by Ledesma. Spot him at the 12. First down, Medina Valley. Good run that time, and that play works like a charm. It, no matter who runs the, the football, they managed to open up a hole on that trap play. Marsh takes the snap, hit in the backfield, and he hangs on to the ball, trying to get around to the outside, puts his head down, and he's still going to lose about a yard or two on the play, but that could have been a lot worse. Yeah, number three blew up that play, Edward Zaragoza, as he was right there at the quarterback fullback exchange, and he almost took that ball away. Yeah. Marsh did a good job by not putting that ball on the ground. Still going to lose three yards, but that could have been a loss of about 15. Yeah, you're right. As when Marsh went to hand that ball off, he was hit right as the running back and the quarterback came together, and he hung on to that football and <laughs> managed to shake away. Second down and 13 upcoming here for the Panthers. Marsh under center, changing things up here at the line of scrimmage. Nobody wide out on the play. Takes the snap, hands the ball off to Morales, trying to go on the right side. Maybe got two yards back here. It's going to bring up third and 11. 44 on the stop for the men and men. That's Palacio. Jared, what's that bright thing growing and glowing in the sky up here? The moon? Oh, I ain't seen it in so long. I forgot what it was. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yep, full moon tonight. Used to looking up and seeing clouds or, yeah. or nothing. No stars or anything. Panthers will have third down and 11 here. They'll send trips out to the left side, one wide out to the right. Marsh out of the gun, takes the snap, rolling out to the left, looking to throw. Sets up, fires toward the end zone. Touchdown, Medina Valley. That's number 33, Ledesma, on the reception, just brought up from the JV, and he makes a 13-yard touchdown reception from Charlie Marsh, and that makes it 48 to nothing. Medina Valley and Dawson Grove will come on to tack on the extra point. And Marsh rolling to his... Weak side, throwing against his body, made a good throw. Ledesma in stride, brings it in for a touchdown. 
getting new people involved. Yep, absolutely. And that's what you like to see. Getting well, pe- and if you're going to bring the young man up from JV and take his touches away, use him. You use him. So Grove ready to try to tack the extra point on. Kick is blocked. And you're, I think there's going to be a penalty here. Medina Valley with a false start before false start. it even started. So they'll move him back five yards and retry the extra point. Well, it looked like Charlie was waiting for the ball and it didn't really get there. And it threw the timing off for Grofe. And that's what, that's what you're going to – well, the good thing about it is you're going to get to re-kick it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And so Grofe will tee it up. This will be a 25-yard attempt. Ball will be placed at the 15-yard line when Marsh puts it on the ground. High snap, but he gets it down. The kick is up, and it is good. A lot of pressure up the middle again from Memorial, but Grove got it over him. So with 4.37 to go, your score, Medina Valley 49, Memorial nothing. We'll take a break. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in a moment. EBN, the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why State Farm agent Hazel Russell and her team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Hazel Russell at 830-931-3441 today or stop by her office at 1103 Highway 90 West in Castroville. You're watching Medina Valley football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Medina Valley. Taking on Memorial at Edgewood Veteran Stadium. 49 to nothing, your score, Medina Valley. Beating Memorial here, and it was a 35 to nothing lead at halftime, and the Panthers ready to Boot this ball away as Grofe ready to put his foot into it. High end over end kick that's going to be fielded by Hernandez at the 15. Starts up field to the 20, 20, 25. Cuts it back to the 30 and he's dragged down around the 31 yard line where it'll be first down and 10 for the Panthers, or for Memorial rather, with 423 to go. And so Memorial will come out here. It'll be first down and 10. The ball spotted at the 31-yard line of the Minutemen. 3.56 and counting to go. And they got things screwed up here. They had five wide receivers out on one side of the formation here. And you're going to get a timeout taken by Memorial. This timeout brought to you by Peerless Equipment Company. 3.47 3.47 to go in the ball game here, and Memorial trying something there, but had five wide receivers wide out to the right and had to take their time out. There's going to be two two timeouts remaining for either club. I've never seen that. No, I've seen I haven't either. Four. They've had four, but now they got five. Yep, and I don't think that's – And so, two timeouts remaining for either side. Memorial with 3.47 to play in the ball game, looking to try to get something going here on uh, offense. Uh, the Medina Valley defense has been very good here so far. Jared, what score did you say? On the way here, 49 yeah. to nothing. Still some time left, though. They're going to try a double pass this time as they let it fly downfield, and that's picked off by Tanner Bippert. Gets it back to the 50, looking for a return here. Cuts it up to the 45, still on his feet to the 40, trying to get outside. Down to the 35, and he's brought down. There's a flag down on the play. I wonder if that's going to be a face mask or a hold, but intercepted by Tanner Bippert. That was some trickery that time by Memorial on the double pass, and it did not work. Didn't fool anybody. As number 15, Isaac Moreno was running right with the receiver, 
And when Bippert cut in front of him, he kind of looked at him like, what are you doing? I'm standing here waiting for the ball. He was, 15 was going to intercept it, but, but Tanner Bippert cut in front of him and took away his interception. Yeah, he and did. a good run after the interception. It was a good return after the interception. I bet Moreno saying, come on, that was my ball there. Yeah, and they are going to get Medina Valley for a hold on the return. So they will mark off the 10-yard penalty. It'll bring it back to the Memorial 46-yard line. That's where Medina Valley will start with 3.26 to go. Another turnover, another interception for the Panthers' defense. Marsh under center. One wide receiver out to the right here for the Panthers. I would expect Medina Valley just to hand the ball off and run it, and that is what they do. I think that was Villafane on the on the carry that time, and he gets it up to about the 42-yard line, a pickup of five yards, make it four, and it'll bring up second down and six. Edward Zaragoza on the stop for Memorial. No urgency here on the Panthers as the play clock is all the way down to 20, and they're just bringing in the play from the sideline. Yeah, and there's no reason for them nope. to – to run more plays than what they have to One here. more first down and it's over. Pretty much. Well, it's over anyways, but the Panthers wouldn't have to snap it. Let's take a knee. Marsh takes the snap, hands it off. Villafane up the middle looking for some room, and he's not going to find any. Gets maybe a yard on the play. Gets it down to the 41. It'll bring up third down and five. Big number 92, Gabe Castillo, senior defensive end on the stop for Memorial. And you'd like to see... Medina Valley get this first down here, not have to worry about punting the ball away or anything like that. Just get the first down and be able to put your knee down and run this clock out. Two minutes and counting to go here in the fourth quarter. Third down and five upcoming for the Panthers. Ball at the Memorial 41-yard line. So on third and five, they come to the line of scrimmage. Marsh under center. And a lot of movement early here. Flags flying everywhere. Ledesma came in motion, and when he broke for motion, the left, the right tackle just came out of his stance, and that's an easy call for the official. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and that's going to move him back, so it's going to bring up third down and 10 now for the Panthers as the ball moves back to the Memorial 46-yard line. But if there is a plus, it's going to run off 25 more seconds yep. off the clock. They'll reset the play clock at 25 seconds. The game clock is going to run also. Panthers under center. No wide receivers here. Sends a man in motion, takes a snap, hands the ball off right up the middle and going to get about three yards. It's going to bring up fourth down and about seven or eight, make it fourth and eight. And the clock will run. At a minute three, the play clock at 34, so the Panthers will have to punt this ball away. Nice. They might choose to go for it here yeah. and just run the ball one more time. Yeah, don't risk a, a run back or a block yeah. punt. Number 92 again, Gabe Castillo on the stop. You might see the Panthers just take it all the way down, take a delay a game, and then punt. But we'll see. Well, going under center. Fourth down and eight to go. Too wide out here to the left as they go from the I formation. Marsh under center. He'll take the snap. Going to roll out, looking to throw to pick up the first down. Fires on the run. Incomplete. It was a low pass. Uh, Lexi Neeb made an attempt for it, but it goes as a turnover on downs, and Memorial will get it back with 23 seconds to go. I don't mind that play call from Medina Valley. You run more clock if you turn it over, so what? Memorials gets it back with well, and it's 23 not like, seconds. Well, it's not like you're throwing a home run ball. No. You just threw a basic – 11 yard out, they needed 11 yards. They did 11 yard out just to try to get the first down to take a knee to end the ball game. So no harm, no foul. And so the Minutemen will come out here. They just need to take a snap here. They'll have four, three wide out to the right. Cesar Flores is in there at quarterback now for the Minutemen. One wide receiver out left. We'll see what they choose to do here. Going to hand the ball off right up the left side. A pretty good run this time. Has some room up across the 40, 35-30, and he's brought down. And so that will run the clock down under 10 seconds to go. And I don't think Memorial will get another play after the first down. A good run and pickup. They stopped the clock here for the first down. 
as Memorial right back to the line of scrimmage. With Zachariah on the carry for Memorial. Guess they say he ran out of bounds, so yeah. they're going to get one more play. Flores out of the gun, takes the snap. They're going to hand the ball off to Zachariah again, and he's brought down after a gain of three. And that will do it as the clock shows zero. Your final score here tonight, Medina Valley 49, Memorial nothing. Medina Valley improves to 5-0 and in district play. Memorial falls to 0-5, and, and Medina Valley has secured a playoff spot with this win here this evening. And they will take on Alamo Heights next week, but we'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back to wrap things up. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in just a moment. At North Park Chevrolet in Casterville, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Edgewood Memorial Stadium as Medina Valley with a 49 to nothing victory over Memorial. As the Panthers moving to 5-0 and in district play, now 7-1 and overall on the season. And uh, Memorial falling to 0-5 as uh, Medina Valley with the win. And we're going to go ahead and name our uh, security state bank player of the game. And we're going to give uh, two of them here. We're going to give it to Aaron Sotelo and to Trey Marty, um, a couple of the receivers for Medina Valley, one of the receivers in the tight end, Sotelo. Uh, making some big catches in the first half, um, some great plays after the catch, and then Trey Marty with a touchdown reception, a couple of good receptions, but the touchdown reception especially, making that play in double coverage, getting hit as the ball got there, getting leveled and managing to hang on to the football. And Cello, and Sotelo, two of his catches were on third down and long yardage, and we kept the chains alive and went and scored on both of those uh possessions of the ball so good job of both of those two receivers uh you, you could have gave it to a number of players but what stands out is the play of those two young men this evening keeping drives alive one of them resulted in a touchdown yep so the player of the game we're giving a co-player of the game to jared marty number 82 and number 80 aaron Sotelo, two seniors tonight for the panthers yep and uh as we mentioned, Medina Valley moving to 5-0 and in district play, setting up a big matchup next week at Panther Stadium against the Alamo Heights Mules. Um, Heights playing Kerrville Tyvee tomorrow night. So there's three teams right now undefeated in district. Medina Valley gets through uh, this week, week eight, with a victory. And so uh, Alamo Heights and Tyvee, one of those two teams, is going to have a loss. After this after Friday. This, after tomorrow night. This this. Friday, they'll be just two sitting up top, and Medina Valley will be one of them. Yeah, and Alamo Heights coming to Panther Stadium next week. That game's at 7.30, 7 o'clock airtime at Panther Stadium. i um, like to congratulate the volleyball team for getting uh, securing a playoff spot, and, and they will play Tuesday against Alamo Heights, I believe. That game's going to be at Harlan. And uh, that game should be here on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network, I believe. We're going to try to bring it to you if uh, – we can get maybe a couple of sponsors to jump on board for the video part of it. So we'll see what happens. If you do want to be a sponsor, contact Jeff Stivers. Uh, Y'all know you have his email and his phone number. So uh, Jared, the Panthers did exactly what they needed to do tonight. Yep. Scored on four of their first five possessions. Scored right before half with a minute and something. With less than a minute left, took the opening kickoff in the second half and just dominated this ball game. And – you got to give your hats off to Memorial because even down at the end of the game, they were still out there 
Compete. Playing their hearts out and yep. competing. And Memorial is a team last year that broke a long drought and was playoff material and made the playoffs last year. Yeah, and they got unfortunately got put in a very, very tough district uh, this year. When you look at Tyvee Heights, Champion, Medina Valley, and Lockhart in that district, a very tough district to play in. And uh, I'd like to give a hat off to the Medina Valley defense who played excellent tonight, pitching a shutout, not allowing any points on the board, uh, limiting Memorial to – very few plays over 10 yards uh, on a play, and they did a great job. I'd be anxious to see a Memorial even reach 100 yards of, of total offense in this game. Yeah, and I want to thank uh, Edgewood Independent School District for hosting us tonight. Gracious host, as always. Uh, had plenty of room in the press box, as always. So thank you, Edgewood Independent School District, for allowing us to be part of Panther – Athletics and the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Yeah, and I'd like to thank all the sponsors for making it possible to bring you these games here on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network because without the sponsors, it wouldn't be possible. Um, reminder to everybody, we'll have our coaches show on Wednesday night at Sammy's Restaurant. We'll be live on there, and then we'll be live for the uh, – We'll be live for the volleyball game. We'll be live for the football game Friday night. And what we're thinking about maybe doing is we still have the gift certificate available for to pick the show sponsor for the name, name of the show, and we've stuck with Sports for Supper at Sammy, so we're going to keep that. But what we had thought about doing for everybody in attendance, write their name in and we'll draw it out of a hat maybe yep. the last week of the season against Kerrville Tyvee, drawing it out of the hat and giving that gift certificate from Sammy's Restaurant to one of the listeners who are there present during the show. want to thank Garrison Garza yep. for running the board. And uh, I know Merle's been back at the uh, KMAC Vibe Studios helping us out also. And so big thanks to them. And uh, final score here tonight, uh, Medina Valley 49, Memorial 0. We'll see you next week when Medina Valley takes on Alamo Heights. So four – Maury Stein, Garrison Garza, and Merle back at the KMAC Vibe Studios. I'm Jared Lucky saying good night, God bless, and we will see you next week when Panther football continues.